Welcome back to another episode of Boston with the Boys, an absolutely electric episode we had. Uh, a couple of legendary Tennessee Titan running backs came in with us. A couple more legendary things we got to talk about, too. What's up, Willie? I was going to say, like, you're back. Oh, and I'm Come fucking on back. Come on, we I'm got the energy back, back on the fucking here. bus, boys. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm down about 20 pounds. My jawline might be emerging from the ashes like a phoenix, dude. I'll tell you what never has to emerge from the ashes. Chevy Silverado. Mm. We are starting to see pretenders and contenders emerging after the first month and second month of the NFL season. There is one player that is never a pretender and always a contender. That player is the Chevy Silverado. Silverado shows up week in and week out with unstoppable grit and determination. Chevy Silverado is the ultimate tailgate flex with the available multi-flex tailgate and power outlet built right into the bed. I got a little hairy there. I had to really fucking sound it out there. And the first ever ZR2 is the ultimate off-road machine. From tailgate at, in the stadium, lots... <laughs> from tailgate in stadium, lots from to tailgates. off... From tailgates in stadium lots. Where's the comma? Just... From tailgate and stadium lots to off-road adventures, Chevy Silverado has you covered. Head over to Chevy.com to learn more about the Chevy Silverado. Not as clean as last time I was here, boys. It's a lot of perky turkeys in my life. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of stars right now. I'm seeing stars, but vibes are high. And I want to take the vibes, vibes down for a second. Are we going to talk about it? I think we should talk about it. Do you want to tell the people what we should talk about? Halloween ends. The most abysmal slasher movie that has been made. Now, I'm talking on my ass a little bit right there. Like, I'm already thinking of some middle ones that could be thrown out to the wayside. I guess the expectation compared to what it was, the reality of it, is where this emotion comes from. Yeah. Because it's as bad as it can get. Like, that movie was not good. As bad as it can get. There's been a lot of bad horror movies out there. Some low-budget pieces, some fucking offshore whatever. And uh, Freddy, uh, Friday the 13th, Jason literally goes to outer space in one of them. He goes to outer space. And that movie's better than Halloween Ends. Yeah. That's how fucking bad this movie was. Again, because of the anticipation, like, everybody, like, this is it. Like, how is it going to end? And the How way they end? turn it out another story in it, I know we're about to get into it, but John Carpenter and the entire writing team over at a Halloween Ends movie should be fucking ashamed of themselves. They really should. I've had multiple people say that we could write a better movie. We could. I have I have no doubt about it. I, I, like, I know I'd say some like funny, cocky, true shit, but I have no doubt in my mind. <laughs> funny, cocky, true shit. <laughs> but I have no doubt in my mind that we could write a better movie. There's no doubt about it, dude. Literally the entire... The movie is so ridiculous. For the first 45 minutes, I'm literally thinking to myself, where the fuck is Michael? Yeah. What's going now, on? Also, if you haven't seen it and you're, you're waiting on yes. Halloween or something, there are spoilers. Please is put gonna a be baseline all, that says spoilers. Yeah, this is going to be spoiler alerts, boys. Because it's, it's been out for three weeks, dude. It's been out for three weeks and the movie's so bad, we went on Friday and there was our group and two other people in the theater. Yeah, we got the private theater for like 140 bucks. 140 bucks. I mean, the snacks were like $300, but yeah. Yeah, we did get a lot of snacks. We fucking we're went off on the, the snacks. Life on the but snacks, let's go boys. through why this movie was so fucking garbage. In the beginning of the movie, first off. Do you, hang on, hang on. How do we want to, how do we want to set this up? Do, do I just need to? No, 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 no. This is a back and forth. This okay. is not me. Okay. I see this you got not me. Yeah, well, I, I got some notes because halfway through the movie, I started taking notes about how fucking upset right, I am. Right, right, right. And I need to make sure I kept all my memories. In the beginning of the movie, this young lad, this young 20 year old, 21 year old individual goes to babysit for a family who has one son. They go to a party. The son, hey, listen, he gets scared at night. He, uh, he's he been pottying the bed quite a bit. It's a, it's a bit of a deal. And he talks about screaming like Michael Myers. Yeah, he's uh, having night terrors or some yeah, shit yeah. like that. So you're thinking, oh shit, like we're getting right back into the classic babysitter situation. I love it. Kids being an absolute shit stick. Like seriously, those parents have done a terrible job of raising him. He's fucking yelling at Buddy. Buddy's showing him a horror movie. It's one of those old bad VHS type horror movies. He goes and gets, gets himself a cake. Making the cake, he's all of a sudden hears a bunch of commotion going on. Goes upstairs, three flights of stairs. Now, Corey, that end of the 21-year-old individual, finds himself in like some sort of attic situation. Six Don't know sense. What. Six sense. Six like sense. He's yeah. trapped in a little attic Yeah, situation. he yeah. goes in the attic and all of a sudden the door slams on him. And that's when you think, here he comes. Yeah, it was a scary, it yeah. was a scary first That's scene. when Michael Myers is going to fucking, that's when he's going to come out of nowhere. I don't, don't know what he's doing in an attic, but I'm not here to ask questions. I'm just here to enjoy the cinema. Fucking all of a sudden, door locks, he starts banging on. You hear the little kid on the other side, he starts knocking. 
freaking out knocking. Hey, buddy, this is not funny. What the fuck are you doing? As that's all happening, cut to a different scene. The parents are coming home. They get out. They're talking. They seem a little tipsy, but not too tipsy because they're responsible adults. They're walking back in the door. And I was excited I, that they got home because oh, I didn't yeah. know if Michael Myers was out, there. Yes, I'm, like, I'm excited God, to see just absolute massacre chaos. Like, let's pick off, pick up where we left off on Halloween Kills. Yeah. Like, let's fucking get right back into that. The door opens. The mom's looking. She hears a commotion upstairs. All she hears is, I think the kid's name is Joey. We'll just call him Joey. I'm going to fucking kill you, Joey. Kicks the door. Door opens. Hits the kid. Kid falls down three flights of stairs. Breaks his neck. Dies. Mom starts screaming. And I think to myself, what a treat we're in for. What an absolute treat we are fucking in for. And for the next 45 minutes, this movie wants to fucking go into this guy Corey's life and fucking um, Lori Stroud's granddaughter who just got out of a breakup with some 45-year-old cop. Like, yeah, they're not that even was close a weird to the same fucking zone. age. Not even close. Like, probably should call the police on him on that, right? But he is the police. So you got a bit of a deal there. Buddy is like getting, he's being treated like a parasite from the whole team. Now, here's where shit really starts to fucking turn for me. And just know when I say this, I'm not coming at individuals. Buddy's at the gas station, grabbing a fucking chocolate milk, comes out of the gas station, and who gets out there? The big bad marching band. The fucking band kids, dude. The fucking band kids come out. They got a kid with a Theo Vaughn mullet that's fucking hit on the fucking forehead. Like, could not look worse. Twirling one single drumstick. Where's the other one, bud? You need two to play. Where the fuck is the other one? Some kid, for those of you who don't know, Haddonfield is in Illinois. Not Chicago, Illinois. Like, some fucking suburb northeast or some shit like that. It's random as fuck. You got salty earth Midwest people there. This fucking Italian kid starts walking out like he's from New York or something, talking about this fucking guy, that fucking guy, gets out of his convertible Lexus or whatever it is, and they bully the band kids. Fucking bully this Corey guy. The trailer Smack park the fucking milk out of his hand. They push him to the ground, falls. Ah, my hand. Don't want to see you around here again type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is a New Yorker doing here? What the fuck is going on? It's absolutely ridiculous. Lloyd Stroud comes and saves him. It's just the whole thing. Well, I've been talking a lot. Is there anything you want to add up to this point? No, I mean, you're doing a phenomenal job telling the story. You're, are we going through the entirety of the movie? I mean, I think... Like, are we, just, are we just trying to pick off things that we hated about it? Like, yeah, getting beat up by the trailer park marching band is brutal. The trailer park drum line is brutal. Buddy, they're younger than him, and they're but at the, the gas station wearing their outfits. We're not trying to take shots at the marching band guys out there. We're not saying you're not tough, but you should not be getting fucking bullied by these marching band kids, dude. Right. And what I thought the, the marching band usually has higher character individuals. Higher character individuals. And I know it's 2022, and we're starting to rewrite stigmas and all that shit. Listen, there's different kinds of people in this world. We can't be all clumped together, right? Jocks are assholes. Not saying there aren't some band guys that are fucking dicks. I'm not saying that. Mm. But I sure as shit, I'm not saying that some 24-year-old adult is getting beat up by four band kids. That's what I'm fucking saying, dude. Right. Two girls, two boys. La getting laughed at. Getting laughed at. But it takes off, like, you even telling that story, like, you're telling a story about something that has zero to do with the Halloween franchise. Yeah, the first time we see Mike, yeah, Mike Myers is 45 minutes into the movie. They got him in a sewer like he's the fucking it clown. Dude, the fucking it clown. He gets pushed off a bridge. Another encounter he has with the marching band. Like, are there fucking 17 people in this goddamn town? Yeah. These kids push him off. Then they're like, oh, Billy, whatever the fucking Italian kid's name is, you killed him. He's like, ah, oh, he's fine. He fell. You he saw fell. him fell. That's my you story. saw him fell. Guy wakes up, probably has significant brain damage. And then decides to go into the sewer? Yeah, he got drugged he he got got into the sewer. Excuse me. By Mike What's Myers it? in front of the homeless guy. Yeah, and the homeless guy is singing whatnots to himself the whole time. It's, it's all frustrating. He gets in the sewer. And the first thing you're thinking is, finally. Fucking finally, we're going to be able to see Mike. Michael Myers, who does not ki care about anybody, will kill anyone. You could help him. You could hurt him. Your throat's getting slit. Here's a couple creaks. Get some gooseys on the old, old, old forearms. He, he starts walking towards that circle, looks to his right, and just starts getting fucking choked out by Michael. You see the mask for the first time, and you're like, this movie's got a fucking chance to make it. This movie's got a chance to right the ship. And what happens next? Some f sort of bullshit yeah, collage. Compassion. Some sort of bullshit collage of fucking all the things that Corey's been through. Not Michael. Some individual we don't even give a fuck about. 
Corey, they start, it starts flashing into Michael's eyes and Michael lets him go. Like all of a sudden, Michael's possessing yeah, cats. Yeah, it's like he's just passing evil to him like some STD that got transferred. Dude, and bro. But for real, he just grabbed him by the throat, passed some evil onto him, and now this dude's what, possessed? He goes from like a goody two-shoes kid to where he's like, now he murders a homeless guy right out. Oh, what, what, was, what was the chick's name, the granddaughter? Uh, Alice, Allison? Allison. Yeah. Allison, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like I killed a guy. And then he just gets progressively worse, and then you're going over and slaughtering the doctor and the fucking the new little. But hire. not even the doctor, you're dude. Tag it's tag team with Michael. Yeah. Yeah, what did do after on. high five and walk away, bro? That shit. I made mean, me it, so it was, it was brutal, bad. bro. Like Michael Myers has one fucking end game, and that's kill Louis Stroud. And anybody in his fucking path, he wants to kill people. Yeah. Not play chess. Like, okay, I might die soon. Let me pass the lineage off to somebody else. Yeah. No, he's possessed. By the devil himself. He is evil when you look into his eyes. And sh shame on Alyssa, or whatever the fuck her name is, Allison. Shame on her who meets this guy, Corey. They like each other. The span of this movie is four days long. The span of the movie is four days long. She's known Laurie Stroud for how long they've been through, how much. And all of a sudden, three days into it, she's like, you don't fucking know. Like, you need to move on. Like, bro, it's obvious that Laurie's gone through therapy and all of a sudden it's taking Halloween as the biggest nightmare of her life. And now they have Pie. traditions where they make pies. Where they fucking make pies together? Oh, I burnt the pie. It's a tradition. You could just buy. It's a tradition. I have to. Doors unlocked. Not even doors killing. unlocked. Living on the corner now. Went from living in a trap house, literally trying to trap Michael in this fucking house, to living that suburban bullshit life. Doors unlocked. That's fucking crazy. And no one's seen Michael. Tell they caught his ass. He's still fucking out there. And there's a four-year time gap. Oh. But still, no, he's not, seen not, the prison not, a long time ago. Not buttoning up the last movie by showing some type of old scene to where there's a transition to where he, maybe he's fucking hanging with the it clown in the sewer. There's just none of that. Like, that's where he starts. Then they go into this other story with this other kid trying to make something out of it, ultimately to kill them all. It some, was just brutal, bro. Some bullshit romantic story between Lori and the, sh the sheriff that Coach goes Yost. nowhere. Coach Yost, who has more work done than a Barbie doll, yeah. he needs to go back and coach the fucking Titans. That's what he needs to do. 100%. Blitz all fucking night. Yeah. He's, he's going back to shit like that, dude. He's just sitting there the entire movie horny for Lori Stroud. Horny? Horny for Lori Stroud. Tell her he has to bring over the garden, which, by the way, at the end of the movie, when he brings in the garden, he brings her carrots. <laughs> yeah, carrots it's and greens. Spring, it's a spring vegetable. Okay, you don't fucking... That's not when they come out is in the fall. What's he doing making carrots in the fall? It makes no fucking sense, dude. And here's what really fucking pissed me off. When Corey starts going on his little, like, exorcism tyrant thing... He fucking goes back in the sewer and grabs Michael. Michael's just standing there like a slug. Just bitched him. Like a, and bitch him. You're just a guy in a mask. And then it shows them wrestling for a little bit, pinning Michael to the ground and taking his mask. How do you go from getting beat up by the drum line to then you can take Michael Myers in a wrestling match and take his mask from him and leave? It's How? Fucking, bro, Michael Myers got jumped by the entire town at the end of uh, Halloween Kills. Stabbed, shot, beaten with a goddamn bat. And what did he do? Slit all their throats. He killed them all. Killed them all. Oh. Not even, and it wasn't even fucking close, bro. It wasn't even close. Allison's got to do a lot of fucking... She's got to do a lot of therapy. She's got to figure out who's on her fucking side or not. Because that's just ridiculous. Uh, dude, it is just... I mean, it's just a brutal movie. It's it was just awful. a bad movie. Every part of it. it as soon movie. as Michael showed empathy, I was like, I'm done. I actually wanted Kevin to leave the theater. He leaned over and goes, Michael never shows empathy. This movie's fucking stupid. Yeah. Corey had a higher kill count than Michael. Is that a stat you wanted to hear today? No, it's not. That fucking Michael hurt. Myers, I've been kids. down. I've been down about it the entire weekend because, again, we love Halloween on Bustin' with the Boys. We, we fucking love, love Michael Halloween. Myers. I worked my ass off to turn Taylor into more of a Michael Myers guy. Over wear the Freddy. mask every year, and it's like you end the franchise that way. I just there's zero closure. And Danny McBride, I, look, I don't know. I know John Car Carpenter's the big name on there, but knowing that Danny Bride's associated with that, like, it hurts me a little. I don't Righteous even know Righteous Gemstone is awesome. He helps Danny create McBride, and write McBride. that. That was yeah. Danny Bride. And he comes out with that. Like, what are we doing? What are we fucking doing still in this movie? I don't know how you pass that story, uh, that story writing in and be like, this is it. You, yeah. This is a banger. Yeah. I thought Halloween Kills was a good movie for the sole reason that it's between a three. No, it's like one I thought was better than obviously the other two. Mm -hmm. Two, it was like, that's a great movie because it's setting up three. And now we got to wait. We got to be excited. And then they put this fucking bullshit at us. And it's just hard to be excited. It's hard, it's hard to go through the rest of Spooktober and watch one of your heroes get bitched by some bitch. Like knowing every year from here on out, 
the legacy of Michael Myers. We're going to see all the videos. Everybody's going to be excited around October every year. It's the Michael Myers mask. Yeah. And we're going to have to be like, it's all over. Like nothing else is coming out because they ended it that the way that they did. Yeah, but they'll, they'll pick it up in about four or five years. James Carpenter won't, but they'll have like a another person. There's fucking 15 of those things. It might be me. It might be us. I might pick that up. We might have we, to pick that up and write those movies. We might have to. Call Cam. We Call could. Duddy. We really could. We could write those movies. I bet you we could write a better movie than that for sure. We interrupt this episode to bring you the Game Time Ticketing app, the exclusive ticketing partner of Bar Barso Sports, created by fans for fans. That means for you. Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest possible price. If you haven't given a Game Time app a shot yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. You boys are going to love it. This, this time of year, this, time, this month is one of the best sports months around of the year. You got playoff baseball going on. You got football in full swing what else you got boys some basketball, basketball starting, starting up. up yeah hockey's, hockey's going on you got it all they've got great deals concerts tickets all of it we, we have tons of barstool fans using it hit us up on social about the great deals they're they are getting uh it's easy to use amazing deals it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the u.s you're gonna love it download the game time app go to the account tab to create a login and redeem code bus and b-u-s-s-i-n for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply of course Download game time, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Back to the episode. Do you have a specific way you wish it would have gone? Okay, let's talk about positives. I'm glad you brought that up. That's good a good question. question. I was not prepared for it, Blas. I like the way the movie ended was how I wanted it to end. Yeah, you do got to have like some type of event to kill off Michael Myers. Yes. I, did, I did not mind that. The whole that. town gets together. They throw him in that fucking grinder. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you have to do it. However, when she's cutting them up, you do got to just go, why, why aren't you taking the head off or going right after the head with your knife? Like all of these years, why are you not stabbing this motherfucker in the head? Right. You're still playing with them. You're wanting to pin him down with your knives. Fortunately, it worked out. But for the love of God, like learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Because that was, the whole movie was God awful. The ending was good. Yeah. Which is decent, tough. It's decent, tough to decent. It was decent. Another good part of the movie. Because when Lori Stroud finishes her book, calls and says, I want to report a suicide and says her own address. I'm literally thinking in my head, like, bitch, like you just that overcame so move. much that in your life. A chess move. A chess move. And she, you all of a sudden you hear a, a gunshot and a big explosion and the door opens she, and it's, the gun's pointed at the camera. You think I'd really kill myself? Yeah. Boom, boom. Binks his ass twice. Outstanding. Now the way Lori handled Allison coming in the door, bitch ass move. She starts crying and shit. It's like, listen, hey, whoa. Before you close that door, your boyfriend, you obviously see the Michael Myers mask right there and he's wearing a fucking jumpsuit. Yeah. Like yeah. he was obviously trying to get yeah. me, right? So before you run away, just know that this is a bit of a situation I had to deal with <laughs> that you're coming to the conclusion of right yeah, here. You should have listened to me this entire time. Yeah. Like I was right. I'm sorry. You loved him. But she's over there groveling with Corey. You've known him for four days. Yeah. yeah I think the, maybe ways you do it, you tie it all the way back into the original. Back in, what was it, 1978? Yes. You could tie it all the way back into where she maybe is living the suburban life, but she's struggling to live it. She's going through therapy, trying to like has give a PTSD. Her, yeah, like give her. She's trying to like rid all these demons by like writing her book and doing all that stuff. And Michael Myers, maybe you figure out a way to where he's been away for four years, but on this Halloween week, like you still have the anxieties of like, yeah, maybe you make a pie, but you're still like a gun's close to you. Yeah, and you play out kind of the original format from the OG. To where maybe the granddaughter's wanting to do something on that night or take him, take him trick-or-treating. And you kind of do some of those same plots to tie it into yeah. the original. And maybe you play out that that one of those final scenes where he's like, you really think I'd kill myself? To where Michael's driving that fucking a car, a little beater car around, just like he did in the first one. And getting on to kind of like what they're going to do for Halloween to where he can go in and finally kill Lori Shroud because he knows it's a one-on-one -on -one yeah. fight. And then Lori gets him and dupes him that way at the end. But maybe you don't, you don't, you got to keep it simple. It's like the formula when the coaches teach you when you get to the, when you're, you know, you're in the, the team room. Keep it simple, stupid. The kiss method. We're yes. going to keep it simple this week, boys. All the complexity, all these little, we're not trying to get too cute by doing a little storyline with a boy who's going to become the next Michael Myers. You got to keep it simple. You got to get back to like, tie it into the original movie if you're going to end them that way. You've done three, you've done three movies. The original, Halloween, Halloween Kills. You need to start Halloween Ends where Halloween Kills ended. There's a big frantic, where is he? I thought you had him. Some sort of freak out. 
Yeah. And then maybe a year goes, goes by, by. Yeah. not four fucking years. That's ridiculous. I agree with that. I agree yeah, with that. Yeah, you go through one year. And in that year span, you can touch on the stuff that the real fans want to see. I want to see Lori Stroud's backstory. I want to see uh, uh, Allison's parents come back and what was her dynamic in life. And you know what I want to know most about? Well, talk to me about uh, Michael Wasn't Myers. Allison's parents dead? Yeah, they were killed in the first one, but like show flashbacks. Oh, okay. Show okay. flashbacks of Michael Myers. Into the or yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I can't believe he's gone. Like, why can't we find him? No one can find him, blah, 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 blah. You know, you know what he did in the psych ward, right? And then it shows a little kid getting put in the psych ward, all the crazy shit he did. Show me 20 minutes of that. Let me invest more and have more knowledge about Michael Myers. And then all of a sudden, October 31st, October 31st, 2021, right? And you're right back in it. And you're, and then it's not, no longer Lori Stroud now living this like neighborly life. She's tried to move on. That span of time you were learning about Michael and learning about the backstory stuff, she's now in a suburb house and she's having a struggle. She calls her therapist a few times. She's been going to a bunch of meetings, but for whatever like reason- Halloween again. He's yeah, still out there. We never killed out him. There. We don't know if he's going to come out. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, you're acting crazy. He's gone. Like he, he's gone. And it's like, the only thing you think at that part of the movie is like, bitch, they're obviously not gone. Like it's been a year. She has a reason to be upset, but everyone's kind of moved on. Everyone's kind of moved on. Not this fucking, I survived bullshit. It's like, you fucking know. No one else knows. He comes back and starts slaughtering cats. And you make Corey, this guy who's the main character of this movie, make him an extra and put him in the grindy thing. Make him be still be a boyfriend to Allison or Alyssa. Yeah. Trying to, get her to come, traumas as well. Trying to get her to come out to like some Halloween party at night. Like, right. oh, I don't know. She goes, Lori's a little like uneasy about it doing right. it. Like, you know, it's only been a year. Right. But Allison's doing her best to move on. And she goes, Lori, you got to move on. Grandma, you got to move on. And maybe, and maybe Corey dresses up. Maybe it's not the white blanket like the first one where it's like, oh, we're getting the boyfriend's dressing up and then Michael Myers comes in and kills her. That's a phenomenal but pull. He, maybe he's dressing up to try and get a little naughty and you still play into the old one. Because, because you have people who've seen the original go, hey, that's what he yes, fucking did the thing. Bro. After the two people had sex, they stand there. Yeah. Dude, with the fucking glasses on and everything. That's what you fucking do. You throw it, and then and then you still have the opportunity to throw the babysitter situation in with Corey. Uh, who's his new boyfriend after mm. a year later? Oh, he's dealt with traumas too. This is a five minute clip of his traumas. This is what he's been through. Now you know we're kind of in this, this triangle of mess right now, trying to find that last dot to make it a square because you know Michael's out there doing some crazy shit. Yeah. He's out there fucking and trying to ruin everything. Band, those band people, maybe a few of them can play into their, maybe they're just part of like the friend group. Yeah. They're not like bad people, but maybe they're, you know, the marching band kid. Okay, 2022, you let a marching band guy wear the Letterman jacket. Yeah. And, shit. and they go out to a party. They go to a party, they go to a house party. And, and at the house party, they're like, wouldn't it be crazy if he came back? Yeah. Man, you know that's all ghost story shit. No, he ain't around. He's dead now. Everyone knows he's dead, but he's at the fucking party. Yeah. And he fucking he's watching, everyone he's up. Driving. Yes. Yes, bro. Absolutely. Maybe that band kid's still just bullying somebody else. Oh, you know that's just old stories. Yes. And then there's a phone call. Lori hears enough shit. She hears about a couple of murders going on. She calls, what's his name? Coach of the, uh, the, uh, the Titans. Coach Yost. Yost. She calls Coach Yost. He's ready to go with a gun in no, the back No, he's of not. Truck. He's fucking, he's the one in the beginning telling her, listen, you got to move on. Like, you've got to move on now. He's gone. She calls him. It gets real dramatic. There's a fucking, the camera zooms in on her face just a little bit. Some dim music. And he, she goes, He's back. And you hear, doom, 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 doom. And, and then it shows him as the camera's panning away and him like, and then he goes, I'll get my gun. And then they fucking go after his yeah. ass. And the movie ends the same way as this one did. Just like how the crew of people are chasing him around town in the first one. Yes. They're like, oh, there he is. And they're all firing their guns yes. off. You Maybe you have a similar scene, maybe not that dramatic. Yeah. But yeah, you tie it all back into where Michael, for whatever reason, gets Lori Stroud alone at her house that she's right. in. Right. And I'd like to report blah, blah, blah. And then fucking off them. We're not off them right that there. That would be but outstanding. Then, then you dramatically send them off the way that they did at the end and right. maybe tighten that up a few loose screws. No, I think that's great how there's a big manhunt for him and then she's at her house and she's yeah. like upset. And then you think, okay, there's a reason why she's I can't do this like, anymore. I'm ready to off myself. Yes. Because her PTSD, she just can't get over the hump she of therapy. She can't get over the hump, dude. She I cannot get over the hump. Side. Boom, he comes in. You really think I kill myself? Boom! Oh, God, his ass! Dude, we just wrote the. Bro, bing, bing. Dude, you fucking. Buddy. Also, with the cop being completely out of age for Allison, what about the mom of the kid who died at the beginning being at that fucking high school party, just getting wasted with like 20 year old? Yeah, and then she's right. like, oh, you're going to be out here having fun? And it was, yeah. It was, and what a weird little dance, like. Dude, when weird he's on little, the ground, like, he's on the ground doing that like fucking little mating thing, call dude? that they're doing back and forth with each other. Then he just storms off, and then the next day, can we talk? And she just blows him off like they've been in a Bro, five year relationship. That's a great fucking point. 
That's, yeah. Hey, listen, I, I lost my shit. Can we talk? Yeah. It's like, ain't that dramatic, boss? Yeah. Just and say, hey, I... reaction. It's not that. It's not that deep. Like you act like we've been in this five year relationship. Right. It's been a couple of days. Like you think there's a ring on my finger right yeah. now? Like we just fucking met. That was their first date. Yeah. Buddy, I feel a whole lot better now. We got a lot off. Our I chest. do. I and feel a whole. Kinda... Lot... Cam, I hope you're listening to this episode, brother. We got to get on this. Screen. Write it up, dude. Because we kind of wrote it. Dave's playing Michael. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I don't. <laughs> wouldn't even think we'd be in it, but you, oh, you real? Michael. Yeah. Bro, if we're going to write I'll the script, we're going to be somewhere in somewhere like, let me die. You can kill Michael Myers. Oh, that'd be me. sick. Well, I, I like just want to be like a, a distant extra. Like, I'm just randomly out there somewhere. Really? Yeah, to where people are like, oh, there's fucking Playoff Willie, year 10. <laughs> <laughs> in the gym somewhere. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm in the gym. Well, in the gym yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Tweeting something? <laughs> yeah. Bro, I literally saw on uh, Netflix. See Michael Myers ain't here. I just tweeted. Uh, you just talk about me tweeting something. <laughs> But he's always on social media. He doesn't even fucking know what's going on right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Y'all see Michael's back? He fucking shows it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell everybody. Get the fuck out of here, play Willie. You go, yeah, you go down a small little hallway or something, like a, a little alleyway, and you just get fucking murked right there. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> like one of those. That'd be solid. That'd be fucking solid. I saw uh, Netflix. I was watching a spook. I was watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it had a lot of that, that shit, brutal. too. And it was a really, really cringy part of the movie where, like, some thicker Asian cat, like, the leather face gets on the bus and he's got a chainsaw on his hand. And there's, like, 20 people. And they all pull out their phones and one Asian guy goes, do anything, buddy, you're canceled. And he murders everyone. And I thought, that movie's so fucking bad. It's that's such a terrible movie. And I legit would watch the movie 10 times before I'd watch Halloween Ends again. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like, an hour 10 or something like that. It's quick, fast-paced, some... Brutal kills in there. The ultimate threat. Yeah. Do <laughs> anything else, you're getting canceled. Don't yeah. Inch. Dude. I thought the worst killing was the... Oh, nice chainsaw, sir. Do anything else, you're getting canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, it was so fucking bad. And Will drove me. And that car ride home was so goddamn quiet. <laughs> Bro... It was just deep size. It was a lot of size. It was like a... Because we knew we had to wait before we until we got on the pod we did talk about a couple things but yeah. it was just a lot of disappointment did we miss anything because it was one of those things where you knew what the reviews were sort of a little bit like everybody was chiming in oh sorry t's and p's like what a brutal movie like you you saw the reviews yeah and i just knew going into it, like i'm easy i'm an easy crowd I'm as easy. You want to hold out hope that it's like, yeah. that I'll still find some. Yeah, buddy, we were literally nice talking thing. about it on the way there. We're like, hey, the reviews are bad. But I told Will, I was like, I saw one of the reviews that go into a lot of backstory, which fires me up as a fan of the whole thing, getting to learn a little bit more. Yeah. So we were excited. We're like, we're going to find something that let's allows us to leave like happy. And I hope, I hope the writers, cool. James Carpenter, Lord, like uh, who, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, is that her name? Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis. I hope those people who, when they watch this podcast, like well, they will eventually do they don't take this as a threat to never come on the bus i hope they come to give us their argument why they thought that was a good idea that's all i want to hear like i want somebody yeah. whether it's danny mcbride preferably him um any of the writers to come on and talk about like why they thought that that was a good plot like that why they thought that that was a good storyline that shit was garbage like john carpenter's name's like the whore master because i had to look him up i was like i gotta tag a couple of these people a lot of them don't have twitter good on them yeah they're I'm smart to, to do that i'm trying to come for all of them on twitter dude. yeah but we need to get john car we need somebody to zoom in and talk about why they thought that that was good like mm. truthfully like come on you have asked it brother like let's be honest hold yourself accountable we'll all be better for it just tell people you fucked up let's redo it well some people were saying that covid got in the way and possibly had them thinking too much about what they orig originally had Blas, did you not hear these last 20 minutes? Like, you don't have to overthink this game, brother. No, I understand. Yeah, no, I, I know you're just trying to deliver a, like, well, you're just trying to play a little The best thing here. about the Halloween thing is the story's written for you. Like, just do a similar plot as the original movie was. Do a similar plot, because it's going to make all the true fans extremely yeah, excited. Yeah, the nostalgia yes. connects everybody, bro. Because you're not trying to rewrite the game. The game's been written, dude. You're just writing the ending now. Now, the ending they did a phenomenal job with it. That's why I thought Scream 2022 did a I good job. I thought Scream did a phenomenal I, thought, I think a, a lot of the Scream is probably the best, most well rounded yeah, I horror agree. sagas. I agree with that. Yeah. And they do a good job. And there's they always a new killer, time. but it's always intertwined of why that person's a new killer. You're playing a game of Clue the whole time. Does your person have a mustache? Like stuff, shit like that, dude. Like, boom. You know what I'm saying? Does your person do a good have job. a mustache? That's guess who? Oh, is that guess? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You've got a mustache? Started knocking them all down. Yeah. Fuck. 
No, oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, but I guess what else, dude? Some more stuff. That's hey, it. College ball. You guys had a bye week. We had a bye week as well. Double bye week. We had double, a double bye week. But our secondary team. Two? Oh, yeah, I thought you guys had one early. Well, we played week zero. Oh, okay. We played week zero. Which didn't count. Yeah, foreign doesn't. soil. Yeah, foreign soil, that game didn't count. But Did as far count. as taking care of your body, we got a second bye week in there, yeah. which is crazy. I think it's our second bye week in a month. We need to rest up for this back half of the season because the fight for the West is wide open. It's wide open. It's running through Illinois. And I tried telling you, I've tried telling you about <laughs> Illinois. They're a decent football. They're a solid football team. Sounds like it. They're sound. They have <sighs> culture. Yeah. They have a good culture. They're building. A lot up. of big things. A lot of big things have happened. Tennessee continues to show that they truly are like a top three team in the country. Yeah, they really are. Like no hangover from the uh, from the game, from being yep. Alabama, which I was like, ah, oh, they might drop a little bit here. Like maybe they'll just win like 30 to nothing here. Who'd they play? UT Martin. Yeah, yeah but, but you know what? They came, in, they came in and did exactly what a top three team should do. You know those coaching speeches? Yeah. You gotta, hey, guys, it's not even about the opponent. It's respect the game. Yeah. Respect, the, respect game, the game, it's about us. Humbled. Yes. Because they would love to come in here and ruin your entire day. Yeah, this is their ruin Super your Bowl. season. Yeah. Because it's no longer in Tennessee. It's not making, about making a bowl game anymore. It's about getting the natty. Yeah. It's about getting the natty. And they handled fucking business. They handled, handled fucking UT business, dude. Ass, bro. Second half. There you go. Fucking, it's all intertwined, Tennessee and Michigan, dude. What were the no big million. headlines coming out of college football? Big losers. A and M. A and M was down bad. Hey, hats off to you, JP. You tried telling everybody about South Carolina. You guys are a respectable four and two right now. Go Cox. You guys are a respectable four Go and two. Go Cox. Uh, TCU's legit. Yeah. I tell you what, the Horn Frogs, huh? That's why I hate college ball, man. Kansas Whoa. State was in control of that, that game. That was pretty. Hey, Will, let's re let's rewrite that. I'm sorry, no, I I sp I say that. That's why I have from... trouble with college ball. I got you. Yeah. What did I say? That's why I hate college ball. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I got you. I, it comes from a place of like, dude. Bet the bus was. We were crushing on Saturday, and I was about to head to bed. Kansas State was up like twenty eight to ten, like controlling the game. And then all of a sudden, I wake up. The overheads, obviously, like we said on Bet the Bus. Yeah. But. TCU ends up winning that game. It's like it can just it can just swing at, at any moment in college football. LSU. LSU. We needed that one. That was a swing that we that we enjoyed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Ole Miss frauds, but we knew that. We knew that. We knew that going into it. Yeah. Who we, th we thought they were? Yeah. Your boy. Uh, what's up? Go ahead. I was so gonna say your boys were. What were we four and two in college? Four and one in the NFL. Yep. If people aren't. Uh, coming on Bet the Bus and just using all their money on on Bet the Bus and just diving into that at this point, it's like you're kind of well, you we you're writing everything for them. Y'all are writing everything that needs to happen. It was our lock, Clemson, right? The Syracuse plus thirteen. Yeah, and a half. Syracuse plus thirteen and a half on Clemson, I, which was almost mo JP's money line almost hit. Right. But that was so that was a like fucking we couldn't have served it up any better. The first turnover happened, they took it to the house. It was like we knew this was going to happen. It's just a matter of when and how. We interrupt this podcast to bring you yet another ad read, and that ad read is make you smell fresh and delicious every single time you step out of the shower and go on about your day. And that is Duke Cannon. Duke Cannon hardworking products for the hardworking dudes. They actually secured NIL deals with a few of a few college athletes coming off of our spring tour from this year. They've inked deals with AJ Henning, Zach Zinter, the boy, Trevor Keegan, the boy from Michigan. Let's see here. There's a lot of stuff to talk about when you go into Duke Cannon. Not only is their social media through the roof outstanding, so anytime you have a chance to check them out, it's unbelievable. The hair wash is awesome. My boy's been using that thickening shampoo, and let me tell you something, it works. My boy's got a full head up there. It looks phenomenal, okay? It was an IR for a second. We've made it back. Beard care, I put that in my little muzzy every once in a while. It makes me feel thick and full, and I absolutely love it. But the number one hitter for us, and I put it on this morning, and that cooling sensation is that cool deodorant you put on. Feels like an air conditioning all day. It's outstanding, and it even feels great when this weather is starting to break. Check out Duke Cannon at any Target or on DukeCannon.com and use code SPOOKTOBER. For 50% off your first order, Duke Cannon is not for clowns. Thanks, boys. Back to the episode. Um, Can we go to, uh, sticking on college football because I see you looking at the list of things we have to talk about. What's the line on Michigan, Michigan State? Ooh, hey, it is. Hey, but yeah, before we get out of college... Michigan, Michigan State. This is a week, huge brother. week. This is a huge week for Michigan State. For us, it's another week, dude. We don't give a fuck. 
They are so below us. Michigan State is so below Michigan at this point. They've fallen so far from Mark D'Antonio. They are literally garbage, an absolute cesspool, a sewer of a college, and that's tough for them, but they're going to have to catch these hands because they did upset us last year. They're going to have to catch the hands, and I will be living my best life come Saturday around 7 p.m. I will be living my best fucking life. I don't, I don't know what the... No, 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 7 p.m. at the end of the day. I don't know when they play. I think they play at noon. I'll pull it up here, Jackie boy. Yeah, what's what's the line on that boy? Hey, the question I do want to ask, you want to go, you want that's the that's the angle you want to go in on. I would almost think you wanna you wanna make sure them boys are still hyped and focused. The Michigan boys. What is it? Michigan? Twenty one and a half. Twenty one and a half. I would uh I would bet that. I would bet Michigan minus twenty one and a half, and I put the bank on it, dude. I put the fucking bank on that because here's what I want to happen. They're going to win by 35. I guarantee that. But not only they win by 35, they're going to go for two at the end because fuck Michigan State, dude. They're going to go for fucking two. It's in the big house. Yeah, it's 23 minus 25. You go, you sit, dude, I know what I said last year. I know I I stood on that podium and I said a bunch of things, but I posted it today, didn't I? I fucking put it on Twitter today, didn't I? I am not backing down from that. Last year was a fluke. They should have never won that game. Aiden Hutchinson had that safety. They it should have been that game should have been over from the beginning. Why is this giant ass fly in here? Jesus Christ, it's like a horse. Like Jumanji in here, Dude, bro. That thing is fucking huge. Oh, did you get him? No. You're 10. You're 10. Almost got that motherfucker. That's tough. That was left-handed. Like if I would have my <laughs> yeah, right. I, you know? <laughs> I can obviously tell that the boys aren't th- aren't that into it. They're no, not. You no, guys, I, you guys I, aren't I, about I it. I am to it. I'm just. It's I'm just a, over. I'm a little taken back by your strategy because you guys lost to Michigan State last year. Yeah, we lost to Michigan State last year. I, I think they're focused. I don't got to be focused on shit. I'm focused on being present with you right now and talking about how they're going to donkey them on Saturday. Yeah, I, you know I, what I'm saying. We we're all go blue here. I'm Bro, just saying put we, this on your fucking hey, we bulletin got, board. We got to respect the game. Respect the game. No, no, no. This is a rivalry game. There's no them, no sleeping on them this year. We're going to donkey the fuck out of them. Rest easy knowing it's going to be over 25 points. No problem. And I would bet everything on that. Uh, I, like, I hope so. Trust me. I hope so. Am I, I being a, a little crazy on this right now? I got a lot. Of I got a lot to learn in betting. I got a lot to learn in my act a little while. I got a lot of thinking to do come Wednesday. I might come sit on, in on that. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no. There's no chance. Oh, oh he's stuck. He's stuck. Get his ass. Get his ass, dude. Oh, oh, he's up. He's up. He's behind you, Will. He's circling you, Will. Target acquired, Mitch. Oh, I hit him. Oh, you stunned him. You stunned him. Get his ass, Will. Watch my foot. Watch my leg. Watch my leg. I got you. I got behind you. He's right here. Yeah, he's up in the air. Oh, he's back? Yeah. Bro, he, hey. Uh, he, you saw it, though. We yeah. can check the tape. He fell down. My man been watching too many Rocky videos. He got hit and kept fucking going, what dude. What I tell you about that? Hey, what I tell you about that right hand, too? It's quick. It's quick. <laughs> we'll see it soon in Atlanta. We'll see it soon. In due time, boys. In due time. There's a lot I need to learn about betting. I know that. I've never bet in my entire life. I can't a, wait to start with the boys. It's a, it's a fun Cannot world, fucking man. fucking wait. But I will we say... We all got a lot of learning to do still. So I feel like people are questioning a few of my, like, moves. Like, why would you do this? I'm thinking, I mean, honestly, I don't know, but we're winning. So <laughs> <laughs> I think you should I think you should listen to me. Yeah. I don't know. We're winning. <laughs> that beginner's luck's moving in, huh? No, we didn't have beginner's luck. I think we're getting the whole experience luck. Oh, really? Yeah. What's Always that hurting. quote about luck? The harder I work, the luckier I get. Say that again in the microphone, JP. The harder I work, the luckier I get. Let's go, kid. That's yeah. fucking huge. You want, NFL? You want to transfer over to the NFL? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were slow clapping. What? The you want to slow clap over? In the 4 and 0. Oh. More importantly, Tyler Wednesday. Heineke, dude. Taylor Heineke. Taking Taylor Heineke. Yeah. Taking down Aaron oh. Rodgers. Those boys don't mess around, dude. That's fucking huge. The boys on a four-game win streak. That's, time. That, I think that's that's number one. Did you see the video of Rabe and Ben Jones just having uh, just the most incredible? Oh, Ben Jones looking. had a flu game. You guys didn't know? Ben Jones played a flu game yesterday. IV. I'm going to get murdered for talking about it. But that man, the epitome of toughness and grit, dude. Dude. Played the entire game with oh, man, with, a, with a GI bug or something. My, my man was not feeling good. Texted him after the game. I said, you all right? I was worried about you when he was just sitting up. I thought, man, something's really got to be wrong. Because usually Ben's in agonizing pain. You're like, okay, he's going to be fine in five minutes. But the fact that he was just sitting there, I was like, I'm worried. I'm worried about my boy. And he comes and he's like, yeah, I got, I got sick. I had this going on, blah, blah, blah. My man played through the entire game. He's a fucking dog. Let's get a moment of silence for Ben, shall we? Oh, 
toughest guy I've ever played with in my life. No question. Ben Jones. Shout out to Ben on that. The boys are on a four-game heater. Massive, though. Four-game heater. They were calling for everybody after two games, weren't they? They were calling for everybody, but but bust with the boys. We weren't. We, we weren't hitting the panic button. We fucking definitely were not hitting the panic button. Ever since we lost our boy. Stop doing Don't. I already knew you were going to do this shit. Ever since we lost our boy, Taylor Lewan, the Titans have been winning in his name. This season is dedicated to Taylor. I think the Titans are making that clear. Boys, if we get a moment of silence for Taylor Lewan, rest in peace, brother. You can't do two moments of silence in like three seconds. The Titans are fucking playing, are playing their hearts out for you. R.I.P. Taylor Lewan, moment of silence. Don't. One of the best. I'm right here. I'm right here, dude. This is, this is getting out of ham. We love you, brother. Amen to that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, the dude. boy. Yeah, hey, Raiders you. won. Finally. Let's go. You, they whooped their ass, too. 21 points in the fourth quarter. 38-20. It's about fucking time, honestly. Yeah, tough for you to see. Gotta, well, they, they had their four losses, and literally all four losses combined 14 points. I get it. They're a good team. And usually it's, it's, it's a good ball club. Usually they they fall apart in the second half or fourth quarter. So mm-hmm. to get like 21 points, you know, going in that locker room, the vibes are absolutely high. Like, guys, we still need to clean some things up. Mm-hmm. But we can step on anybody's neck in this league. So I think they start rattling off some wins here. Hopefully they get back in the division race, which will be tough with the way Kansas City's playing. They are Kansas City's playing dominant, monsters. dude. Absolutely dominant. They're terrifying. I was an idiot in fantasy. I played the 49ers defense. <laughs> Well, hey, Blas, leave your emotion out of it, Leave the emotion out of it. Leave your emotion out of it, Blas. Travis Kelsey had a touchdown. They got called back. That really fucking hurt me, too. It was a tough week in fantasy. I lost by eight points. My biggest loss yet, I'm five and two. Wow, that's a nice... Oh, yeah. Your boys rattling off, hey, I'm five and two as well. We still need to play tonight. Tonight needs to happen, but I think I'm going to be five and two after Are this you? week. Yeah, I guess tonight has to happen also, but I have nobody playing. Neither do they. So I've lost. <laughs> so it's over. Oh. Yeah, speaking of Travis Kelsey, like him and their little their new Heights podcast. I like it. Message received. Bet. Noted. What happened? We are competing. Are we really? They are rival number one. Oh, really? I think so, right? They're active player podcast. Him and his brother. Yeah, but there's a world for him all live. For sure, but I'm just talking about like selfishly a little competition. All right. Do we want to talk about the album? Yeah, you want yeah, you want to bring up the thing. album, Will? Why don't you go on? Who had an idea for an album about two years ago? The boys. Hang on. That's not how he wants to say it. Taylor Lewan had an album, oh. had an idea to do a Christmas album a couple of years ago. 2019, right? Yeah, in 2019, it was the COVID year. No, 2020, excuse me. It was 2020. Incredible idea. The idea was to get got people, the players who have been on the bus, each person is involved in creating a, one of the favorite Christmas songs, and we release a Christmas album to raise money for the... Uh, uh, the Barstool Fund. Like, all the money was going to go to that. We were going to, like, do this album, have a lot of guys around the league be on the album, sing our Christmas songs. We did not execute on it. I assume you want... Uh, I did not execute on it. No, it's not about you. Not, we didn't do that. That's the part where I'll say we did not execute on it. Okay, yeah, I could have done a better job not, doing it, too. We did not I'm execute I'm just an ideas man. I'm an ideas man. We did not execute on it. Unfortunately, now two years have passed. Uh, Jason. Jason Kelsey. We saw the video. They're releasing a Christmas album. And I'll buy that album. I'm going to buy that Uh, album. Yeah, I'm about the album, too. I think it's awesome. It's just that now if we did it, it looks like we would be piggybacking off them. Which is tough. And right now, like, their podcast is exploding. Like, we've got to figure out a way to stop the bleeding. If we're looking at it from a scoreboard standpoint. Oh, they're... They they get, like, six... They get, like, six-figure views per... Per. (laughs) Oh, really? Yeah, they're crushing it. Oh, good for them, dude. So basically, they're basically like the number one. They're phenomenal. Two brothers, Jason. He's like does they're, this extremely well with all like the subjects and all that yeah. stuff. They all talk about. They tell. He's stories. the guy that really keeps things they going. Tell, yeah, they talk about. It helps that their both teams are five and one, six and zero, oh, or six and one, seven and zero, oh, whatever. Yeah, because if it was flipped, yeah, it'd be it'd, it'd be, be a tough deal. But they're speaking right after every game, kind of like a Draymond Green thing. And then they yeah. preview the weekends. They talk about all the headlines going on in the league. They're doing an incredible job. They do a, they're doing that. a good job. We need to have them on the bus. Absolutely. Yeah, we need to have them on the bus. After saying they're our rival number one, we need to have them on the bus. We, You said that. I'm happy for them. Because I think you we're can, all... You can, you can be happy for somebody and still compete with them. Not me. So if you compete with somebody, you got to hate them? 
I gotta fucking hate him. <laughs> I gotta hate him. I got you. All right. But uh, yeah, fuck those guys. Uh, I think they, <laughs> I, I, it's a tough deal, dude. It's a tough deal. What else is a tough deal? Broncos. What the fuck's going on with them, dude? Because they're making Seattle look like absolute geniuses. Say that again. The Broncos? Sorry, I are having I a tough one. Out for a solid you okay? Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Broncos are having a tough one and they're making Seattle look like geniuses. I agree. Russell didn't play, I know, but look at the way Russell's been playing. Yeah. Geno Smith's looking like that first round pick he was drafted in. Was he a first round pick or early second? I think, I, yeah, I think he it was, was late first, first, early yeah. second. But no, regardless. You're, you're right. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Like it's the, Den, the Denver Broncos, it's a catastrophe out there. A catastrophe, Jerry, dude. Jerry would say. Uh, Seattle's playing fucking good too. Like somebody you thought would probably be at the bottom of that division. It looks like they're going to be contenders in the division. Are they really? Yeah. That's wild. That is crazy. Because you th literally in the beginning of the season, you're looking at Broncos going, when well, Mel was here, Mel's like, we're the team in the AFC West. And the Seattle's fucked in the NFC West. Here's a question for you. Are the Super Bowl champions even going to make the playoffs this year? I don't know. Seattle, 49ers, Rams, Cardinals. Cardinals aren't that It's looking right. like no right now, right? I think no, bro. Having a lot of trouble in that offensive line. Yeah. I'll tell you what they need to do. They need to bring Odell back, too. Odell needs to go somewhere. Everybody's calling for him. Everybody wants him. Yeah. He's going to go to Minnesota. Is he going to go to, um, I think, even Travis Kelsey? <laughs> like, yeah. is he going to go to Minnesota? Is he, you know, I guess that's it. <laughs> but uh, the Kelsey brothers, uh, Jason's out there saying, hey, come to the Chiefs. Um, Travis, Jason, Travis, Travis. Is saying come yeah, to the yeah, Chiefs. Travis is saying come to the Chiefs. I don't know if there's room for him on the Eagles. No. Yeah, no room for. I don't think there's any room for him either on the Eagles. Which is crazy to say about Odell. Well, how do you not have room for Odell Beckham? What about the Bills? Was it? What about the Titans? That's a nice rumor to get going. That's a nice rumor. I'll start that rumor. Have you heard? No. What? Odell might go to the Titans. You've heard. I've heard. People have told me. People, a lot of people are talking. And the word on the street is Odell wants to be in Nashville. We'll, we'll welcome him with open yeah. arms in Nashville. I actually, uh, someone told me, not me specifically, someone went to John and asked John, and John said he'd love to have Odell in Nashville. I'm just saying what people have told me. You can't confirm nor deny, but you've heard. I've heard. I love that. Yeah. Let's get Odell Beckham to Nashville. Taylor Schefter. Taylor Shefty. I'm fucking here, boys. I'm fucking here. Yeah, I could see. I could see that. Oh, him. Oh, him getting. I mean, that. I feel like that stuff kind of happens. It's, uh, you know, it's it's more humorous. Garrett didn't have a mic. Garrett that. didn't have a mic, so no one knows what you're talking about. Garrett asked, what do we think about what happened with Kyler Murray on Thursday night? That happens. Yeah, that happens. Tensions run high all the time. You yell at your coach. Hey, calm the fuck down. Uh, they're yelling in the, they're yelling in the, uh, Headset. Speaker. Yeah, they're yelling in the headset. They call a timeout. He's over there chewing them out back and forth like that. That fucking happens all the time. All the time. All the time. People lose their shit all the time on the sideline. Yeah. You move you on. You get done with the series or in the middle of a timeout, you go over. People are kind of bickering back and forth. And usually, like, you know, a player spazzes out and it's kind of like everybody. Yeah. Everybody just calm down. It's, it's all okay for the coach to lose their shit. But when the player starts losing their shit, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa calm down. Yeah. What are yeah. you doing, buddy? Yeah. So I don't think anything's going to come with that. I don't know. They just paid him bags. So. I am. Another huge topic, are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers dead? I don't know. Because last week, I feel like there was, you know, we, you know everybody's kind of still 50-50. Vegas just duped everybody with that one. Here's a question. Is Mike Evans shaving points? Oh, what? That's an actual thing? Is that an actual thing? That's what I heard. Mike Evans might come to the Titans. I've heard that also. Mike Evans coming to the Titans. Oh, yeah. So there's a couple of them out there. Imagine the Mike Titans Evans. The Titans do need, they, we do need a receiver now. Whoa. I'm just saying, you need, you, are, you know, no disrespect to the boys. Trust me, I've been those boys. Yeah, I'm all about, out there on the field. I'm all about spreading rumors, yeah. but when you start talking specifics, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to He said, whoa, back whoa, up. yeah, no shots at, uh, no shots at all those boys. Yeah. I've been in your guys' shoes. <laughs> <laughs> we need a linebacker to come fill this spot. I've been there. It's tough, but. The sooner you can accept reality, the quicker you can move forward. So you think, who do you think they should get? Well, let's go back Video to the Mike Evans thing. Right there. Someone did say something about Mike Evans shaving points. JP? So after the game, he was seen signing an autograph for one of the refs. And that's been the controversy. 
Now, I think Mike Evans is a high-class guy, same draft class. I think every time I've been around him, he seems outstanding. I don't think he'd be shaving points. I think it's too hard. Yeah, I think everything that I've heard. He has a receiver. He dropped a touchdown. He dropped a he dropped a touchdown, and that's not like him. My man's got hands. I did wide feel like open. Did a dough for that little second effort, but I agree with Taylor. Like the, all the things that I've heard about Mike Evans, there's just I wouldn't be able to wrap my mind around. You would never guess issues. Mike Evans. And that kind of tie-in rumor, like he signed something for a referee, he could be a fan of him, or his kid, or a friend, it's or the rules though. Somebody who's is it really? I I used to sign autographs for the referees all the time. I was like, hey, Will, come over here. Can you? Kidding. That's just that's just again for more clicks. Leave comment. comment. <laughs> Leave a comment. Please subscribe. Yeah, apparently, subscribe. apparently, New Heights is just barreling down on us right now, and we're terrified. Currently in the league, an hour ago, uh, Frank Reich has benched Matt Ryan, and Sam Ellinger is going to get the starting spot next week. Whoa! It's time to make a move. You got to make a move. I mean, so is Matt Ryan Dunzo? It's over for him. The question. I think so. Father Time it, comes for everybody, man. Did the Titans end Matt Ryan's career. It looks like it. It looks like it. You got. You I don't want to get off the Buccaneers train. I want to go back to that. It's I, hard, man, to go to that because there's so many things swirling around Tom Brady and Giselle and all that. Like I remember being in college and me and my girlfriend were going through stuff, and I'd like be in the middle of the game, being like, "Damn, how am I gonna fix this?" You know what I'm saying? I was like, just like, "Fuck, man," and you don't play your best, so. Like, damn it, she saw it. She saw the messages. Yeah, and they're all rumors. Oh, yeah, she, she saw the Facebook yeah. messages. She knows what's going on. She saw the condom. Yeah. <laughs> she condom. Who uses those? Pack that after. Um, but, dude, yeah, you, like, and it's like Giselle, Tom, it's somebody's relationship. Like, if I was in that situation, I would hate people to be talking about that. I'd be like, I just feel bad for Tom. I feel bad for her, too. I feel bad for the whole entire family. But it does seem like it's kind of something. Something definitely is weighing on Tom. We don't know what's really happening with them, right? We're not sure. They got a couple of divorce attorneys on retainer, allegedly. But sums up with Tom. Yeah, and in terms of ball, too, like, I just feel like it's uh, it's not looking good. No. Not looking good for the boys in Tampa. I wonder what— doing really anything well right now. I mean, they play a little bit of defense, but— Yeah, they got a good defense. Good penetrating defense. 4-3 defense are solid. But I feel like the continuity, like, the the con all the stuff, the boys, man, they're kind of like— they're having a toughie. Yeah, I think they're All having All that a tough success, time. and then they're going through this right now. It's right. hard to stick together. It's a hard thing to do. And then their number one leader, he's having troubles. And if he's not all in, I'm telling you, like, it, it, it's going to weigh on guys. It doesn't matter what the, the history of Tom Brady, like, in this moment of performance base, like, right here and now, that stuff affects you. It doesn't matter. Like, when somebody gets to play by a different set of rules, like, it, it gets a little dysfunctional. Yeah. Yeah. What is that like in a locker room? Like, I don't know if you all have had anything, something like, obviously this is on a different level. It's Tom Brady. Everyone knows who Tom Brady is and Giselle. But in a locker room, are you kind of like tiptoeing around like, oh shit, like, is he on a good day, bad day? Or are you just riding about someone's him? relationship? Just like someone going through it in like a public eye like that, like a teammate. Are you tiptoeing around the facility? Like trying to be like, fuck, this is weird in here. Or are you just like, Tom's our guy. We got him. Like, let's try and do this. I don't think, I've never been in a situation where anything was this public about somebody's relationship. Anything relationship, no, but I mean, I've been in some toxic cultures where like guys are in the headlines big time, but you, you don't, yeah, I mean, you, you don't like tiptoe, but you're not really asking questions, like, you're yeah. not really connecting with them on like a player relationship, unless that person's addressing it to like eliminate any fires going on outside to where you have whether it's a team meeting, not like Back. a oh my fucking god, not like a players only meeting, mm, buddy, not like a players only meeting, but we got to pause real quick. Adversity. Adversity on the bus. <gasps> you hit him? Oh, he kind of swooped. Oh, there he is. Yeah, with me, just don't hit me, bro. <laughs> Will's looking back. I see him over here. Will's like this the flies over there. I'm seeing ghosts, man. He's, he's quick. He's back. He's back this way. Oh, imagine. All right, let's get back to the fucking podcast, all right, dude. All right, all right, I'm going to do my best not to see it. What was I saying? Uh, you've been in toxic You've been in toxic locker rooms before and stuff, and, and if you're putting out a fire. Oh, 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 if you're trying to, like, uh, eliminate the fires going on, usually somebody's addressing it so you can kind of, like, hit it head on and not make it a distraction. Like... 
At the end of the day, they're, did they put up a goose egg on offense? Or did they score any points? No, they, they just looked like they had a... I mean, they got dusted by the Carolina Panthers, who's in an absolutely shit... Who's in an absolute shit... They traded storm. everybody. Yeah, by the way, Carolina. congratulations on CMC. Plus. Yeah, they traded it. They traded a CMC. They traded Robbie Anderson. They fired their head coach. Like, they're... Baker Mayfield's not even playing. Like, they're... It's abysmal in Carolina. Like, they're preparing for the future. Like, good on them. That's what they need to be doing. Yeah, they're in a tanking for two a situation. But for, uh, yeah, but for Tampa to lose like that, I think it just kind of shows what could be happening on the inside. Like, again, being in uh, being on teams with where there's toxic culture and stuff, like, it's one of those, there's a lot of headlines going around to where you're just like, oh, I'm just going to do my thing. Or you don't really talk to guys about what their situation is. You hear all the rumors. You talk about it maybe amongst, like, a couple guys. But unless something's getting, getting addressed from a team standpoint, Again, that's a guy, uh, t like, it's Tom Brady. He's the GOAT. Yeah. So if he's, like, continuing to, uh, you know, not be there on Wednesdays or whatnot, I don't know what's going on. I'm not saying, like, Tom's, like, purposely, intentionally doing all that stuff. But when all that that operation is going on the way it is, like, it does affect the team. Like, it does affect the guys unless it's, like, addressed somehow. So unless there's some things coming out of guys having meetings and shit like that, like, I don't think it'll it'll go well for for Tampa. That's my opinion. That you think they're dead? Take. I think Tampa Bay Buccaneers are dead. I think Tom Brady's dead. I don't think you'd see Peyton Manning losing a game like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's tough to say. I wonder what playoff Lenny thinks. I like to get him on the horn and yeah, kind of talk to him about it. Because again, bit. all we're doing is just speculating. All we're doing. All we're doing is speculating. And you're right. Like the way playoff Lenny was preseason, but again, preseason, everybody's winning the Super Bowl. Everybody's feeling good. Everybody. You're getting in the you're getting in the team fights and like doing all this stuff. Everybody feels good about who they have on their roster. Now that shit's kind of hitting the fan, you would you would like to know what's going on inside. Yeah, because um, it could be different. It could be a lot different. Who knows? Let's hope they can write the ship a little bit. Because I think like if you're in the situation, if it goes like this the rest of the year, now Tom's in a situation where he can he was where he could play forever for whoever he wanted, and now he's in a situation if it keeps going like this where it's like you're done. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it's crazy. How I'm not saying he, any, somebody else will give him a shot. There's no obviously that's going to happen. His last year, period. I think it's got to be no matter. what. I think I even think, if he had success, it would be his last year with that massive. He literally said in a, in a post game interview, "There's no retirement in my future." But I think that's just for smoke and mirrors. Yeah, smoke and mirrors. I, I, I respect and also agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's smoke and mirrors. I think this is the last year, and I again, I think that even plays into the equation of you know, all the business stuff that was agreed upon to where he can go do all this stuff, this and that, the other. And if he's kind of halfway checked out, not halfway checked out, like he's not giving the boys everything. But again, it's just a different game. You can, you're a little bit of a leg out the door. You got a massive deal lined up for you in the media world when you're done. Massive. And it's like, if the boys aren't playing well right now, it's, you know, it'll be interesting to see how like the next couple of weeks unfold with Tampa. Yeah, if he's in the situation, if you're in the situation and your family life allegedly is going where it is, I would dip. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, I'm out of here, boys. Again, this is what it how is. How old is he? 45? Yeah. It, it's bigger than football. It's going to be a small little blemish on an incredible career. Yeah. On the best career of all time. Yeah. It's bigger than ball. Yeah, it's bigger than football. It's bigger than football. Yeah. And everyone, if he left, got people will be pissed. Tampa Bay will be mad. In a year, they'll be fine. Yeah. They'll be He'll probably fine. be a celebrating the greatest football player of all time. Yeah. He's going to be the only player with two names, or a name on two stadiums. Yeah. That's, that's I mean, great, right? That's great pull right there. That's a nice. Isn't that wild? We should have asked Chris Johnson that if he thinks he should be in the Ring of Honor. Is he not? He probably will be, right? He should be, right? I mean, three Pro Bowls. Play three Pro Bowls. Play three more years. Play three more years, too. You think he should be in the Ring of Honor? No. I'd like to be. I think there's, a, there's an argument for it. But, nah. And the last two years really kind of crushed me. Appreciate that, boss. We'll figure it out. Trust me. Appreciate that, boys. There's one thing we can do. <laughs> we can make that kind of shit happen. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Should we get to tier, uh, to tier talk? Shout out, no free shout out of the week. It needs to happen first. All right. I think it's time. Hang on. Did we hit on all, anything Anything else to fucking, you know, get... Yeah, we got to get going. Perfect. All right. Yep. All right. It's time for shout out, no free shout out of the week. Bloss, your team's doing phenomenal. I'm sure your shout out, no free shout out has something to do with the 49ers. And uh, you're up, buddy. Let's see what you got. Right on me over here. Yeah, my shout out, no free shout out this week. Um, despite all the bad talks we had about Halloween kills, there were a few parts that still Halloween made ends. me jump. So my shout out, no free shout out this week goes to those movies that could still make you jump. Those spooks that could still make you jump. Couple things I have an issue with there. 
think it's kind of lazy. I agree with the fact that you should shout out the movies that make you jump. And I, there was that part where the kid jumps out in the beginning of the movie. But other than that, what, what do we really have? The, uh, the part where Michael Myers grabs his, uh, his throat through the sewer, that, that made me jump a little bit. There was a, few, there was a few sneaky parts in there that made me, made me jump. I'm with you until you talked about Halloween ends. I don't think that place, that thing deserves any flowers. And that, that's my, 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 it's a bias thing. I'm sure that's... But it's, it's recent, those recent spooks. Because like, when you rewatch, you know where all the jumps are. But there's, you get older... You kind of, you can kind of like identify. Yeah, you re, you rewatch a movie. You're gonna I know think where the shout out, no for shout out, should be <laughs> those movies you can rewatch and still get the jump, like a, the original Paranormal Activity. All right, All that's right. on me. That's on me. Maybe I overstep. I know I overstep. That's on me. Jack, what do you got? Uh, kind of along the same lines, but we went and saw the movie, obviously, and uh, I've been house sitting for my parents. And so they got a big house, at, like, you know, over in Brentwood. And mm. it's, you know, we were talking about on the episode, uh, or Chris was, having, like, a, a big house. You hear noises. You hear those creaks and the cracks. And especially even though the movie sucked, it's still, I left the movie a little creeped out knowing I had to go back to an empty house. And it's not, like, being scared, but it's waking up the following morning when it's bright out and you go, what the fuck was I scared of? And you yeah. go, oh, I could beat anything. But then the night comes back and it fully resets. You go, oh, fuck, somebody is in here. And I accidentally realized that the back door had been left open just like an inch. Ooh. And I couldn't remember if I did that or not. So I sat there with this just fucking horrible fear that someone was in the house. I went and kind of looked around, but I didn't go upstairs. So I was like, fuck it. If they're up there, they're up there. So... But my shout out is waking up in the morning, completely safe, never thinking you'll be scared again until the following night resets again. So mm. that's me. Hey, that's a solid one. That's a solid one, Jack. But we know you didn't go home alone that night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I get what you did there, though, boss. All right, Mitch, OH. I oh, yo. Relax. Um, my shout out sort of goes along, uh, I guess, closer to blonde. Spooky shout outs? I didn't figure one out. Uh, no, not, not me. Spooky shout out, but. <laughs> My um uh, my shout out is just uh, the movie experience in general. Just going to the movies with a bunch of your friends and like shout out Taylor for this all the stuff. <coughs> I appreciate that. Uh, but like that like just being with all the boys and like going to the movies and getting all your snacks and then hurry up getting into the theater to watch the previews. I know that's been a shout out before, but like just the overall movie theater experience vibe. Mm. Yeah, the movies theater vibe. There we go, Especially movie theater. That one gives a, a special vibe. Yeah, it does. But the seats, they didn't have the reclining seats like Green Hills has. The seats were tough on me, dude. They were tough. Post we we had to get humbled with the seats. We got humbled. It was, kinda, it was a foreshadowing for the movie. In high school, those seats are fucking incredible. Hitters. Yeah, but, you know, now we've we've grown to bigger and better things. We need some recliners. Yeah, bags. All right, JP. All right, so mine, still on the movie train. Oh. But, and it actually kind of applies with this with these Halloween movies a little bit, but my shout out, no free shout out goes to the final fight scene in the movie, in the second to last movie of a series, because something happens in it where you're like, you're amped up. Cause you know, the next one is like, this is it. We're ready. And it's just like, as opposed to the last movie, you're kind of like, it ends. There's no more movie left. Second to last movie. You're looking forward to that, to that finale. Mm. Can't help but think about Halloween kills in that situation. Yeah. Thought yeah. out. Can't out. help. All right, merch. I mean, Garrett, what are, we, what are we fucking shouting out today, buddy? I'm so glad you said that. Why is that? Because yesterday I ran into someone at the game. He stopped me, fan of the pod, repping the merch. And he said to me, hey, don't let Taylor fuck with you on your shout out. No free wow, shout Wow, okay. So my like shout that. out is to Morty, the fan that stopped me. The guy's the ride with the back of the bus. So that's my shout out this week. All right. Okay, Morty. Oh, that's solid, dude. It was Titans Rick? No. Oh, man. He fires me up every time I see him somewhere. <laughs> Do you want me to go? Shall I go? Go ahead. Well, my shout out, no free shout out of the week goes to AA Batteries. The reason I'm shutting out AA batteries because I feel like they're underappreciated. We were in a little bit of a bind last week, Jackie boy. I don't know if you remember out here, you needed some AA batteries. Garrett, are there AA batteries? When you're playing video games and your controller dies a little bit, sometimes you only need one AA battery. You're not going to switch both of them out. You might just need to throw one in there just to give it that little juice you need to enjoy the rest of the night. I think it's a very underappreciated 
item, product. So I want to give it some flowers. I want to give it some love. My shout out, no free shout out goes to AA Batteries, brother. Nah, fuck AAA, AAA, aren't, AAA <laughs> isn't as much a necessity. You, it's like the AA, AA batteries are the number one hitters. Go everywhere, bro. Yeah. You're checking remotes. You're checking everything. Like, oh, AA batteries here? Just to throw one in your controller or whatever. Your doing. remote is a AAA. You, you, yeah, you like it better when everything's a AA. Yes. What, uh, what was your shout out last week? Quarter oh machines. my God, dude. That shit had me rolling last week. Yeah, quarter machines. That's solid. That's solid. Thank you. Uh, let's stay in the Spooktober theme, dude. I feel like not just Spooktober theme, but holiday themes in general. My shout out, no free shout out, goes to usually any town or city you go into, there's that one neighborhood. The whole neighborhood bands together. They have a close relationship and they all decide we're going to decorate like crazy and be the neighborhood to drive down, whether it's Christmas lights, make your own haunted street or something like that. Just really diving in together and having that kind of community, that kind of camaraderie of each neighbor individually bringing something to the table and saying, I'm not going to be the one that's left behind. I'm going to dive in and add to this theme, be Spooktober, a Christmas. Those are the two that keep coming to my head and just keep diving in. So, you know, at night when the kids are bitching and moaning, you can't get them to fall asleep. So you go and drive down that road and have them just stare at the lights, maybe make a couple of passes at it. And it just lightens everybody's fucking mood. So my shout out goes to community decorations. I like that. That was a good one. Thanks, boys. I appreciate that. Thank you. Quarter machines. <laughs> All right. Tear talk, boys. Let's do some tear talk. Fucking. Tear talk. Tear talk this week is Halloween candies. There's a lot of them out there. And I think I'm excited about this tear talk because it's really going to switch up what everybody's heard about my candy vibes. So I'm excited. I'm very excited. It's really going to switch up what everybody's heard about your candy vibes? My candy vibes. It's going to switch up because I think Halloween trick-or-treating, it's a way different game than going to the movies or just a pleasure, uh, pleasurable dessert treat you have at home. So I'm going I'm to switch mine up. Absolutely. I think it switches it up. So I'm really excited for this. Should we take, should we take just a few minutes? Go ahead. We interrupt this episode to bring you a read from Whistle Pig Whiskey. The reason that this read is important is because we have a new barrel coming out. You take in the aroma, you get nice overtones of caramel and toasted almonds finished with a, what is it, a uh, cream brulee. Cream, oh, is it cream brulee? Creme brulee. Creme brulee finish. With the fire dessert. Um, a little heat up front as it nestles down your throat. Think of yourself daytime like it's a hammock. You're just sitting on the back porch, mm. rocking on your hammock. Mm. This bottle is coming out very soon. Very soon. Continue to follow us to see when it's going to release. Stay tuned for more on how and when to buy our bus and barrel, but we are going to need everybody because once we fucking crush this rollout, this little, this bottle that you see with just a sticker on with bus with the boys, it's going to turn into a full, uh, co-branded collaborated bottle with bus with the boys. But thanks for listening again. Stay tuned because the bottle is coming out very soon. Back to the episode. Our tear talk is best Halloween candy. This is I think this is super important. This extremely is a super, important. This is an extremely, extremely important. important topic. There's a massive difference between Halloween trick-or-treating candy and then what you're buying at the gas station. I agree, brother. And and like you said, the movie theater too. Yeah. All right, so... This is the back of the bus. This is a collective. Back of the bus, yeah, collective. Back of the bus. Okay, all right. Yep. Is this tier three? Yes. We don't have an honorable mention. Well, we might. Yeah, well, yeah. Is the, do you want to say what we might collectively think is the God tier? Yeah, do you guys want to go over God tier maybe? Tier talk. We are now going to dive in. The back of the bus will start first. Now, before we go any further, Halloween candy. It's a big deal. And it's not necessarily what you would have at a movie theater or at the gas station. But it's that tasty treat you put in for most of us, your pillowcase when you're a young lad mm. and what you're most excited about. So, boys, who's starting us off? All right. So, our tier three. You can never go wrong with it. We heard a, a very polarizing opinion about it on Twitter this past week. It's... Reese's peanut butter cups, those single wrapped by themselves, never go wrong with those. Ah. Uh, our tier two, this is actually. Go ahead, J J B U. Oh yeah, yeah, tier two. Oh, is this tier yeah, two? Yeah, yeah. My personal tier one. Oh, the greatest candy to see in the trick or treating bowl, and it is from the greatest cartoon of all time. It's that SpongeBob gummy Krabby Patty. Buddy. Oh. Oh my gosh. That is a it hitter. It makes me want to go trick or treating right now. Oh, oh, that is such a hitter. That's our tier two. Damn, how do I steal that? 
I can't. All right, in our tier one, That's because specific. when when, when you trick or treat as a kid, money is it's not in your mind. You don't care about money, but financially, what can make you rich when you roll up to a house? And it's usually those big neighborhoods with the three stories. Mm. They got an elevator probably. And, all, and they hand out a king-size candy bar. So it doesn't have to be a specific candy, but any king-size candy bar you get on Halloween, you are at that point financially solvent, as we like to say, and bet the bus. And that is something you can flex on all your friends with because all of a sudden you have probably four times the amount in one single house. So the king-size candy bar is our, our number one. I love that. But it makes me a little obsessed on a specific one. It's not. You're just saying king size candy. Yeah, because like, you're, if you're claiming all candy. Because if that's the case, tier one is truly when they when you go up and there's a bowl of it and it says please take one. You're like, I ain't just taking one. But it really doesn't even matter what the candy bar is. It's it just does matter. The king size candy matter. bar will beat any other candy out, though. I don't believe. I don't agree with that. Halloween. Let we'll the internet. King size matter. almond joy versus a small Reese's peanut butter cup. That's a great point. That's a great point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love, I love where you guys went with that, but I just don't think it, it applies. I don't either. Yeah, we'll let the internet decide. decide. I think it's a disqualification. <laughs> what? No, you you can't do this again. Hey, honestly, we'll like let the internet you decide. Say, you can what, you're gonna put like a blank bar. candy bar and be like king size candy bar. Of course, people are like, oh, it's a hitter, but it's also not a hitter because it's not based on this. Snickers over hers. What's your what's your candy bar, bro? You can't just say king size. You're naming all of them. Like any yeah. individual candy is being used for a king size. I mean, for me personally, people are gonna say the Snickers, the Kit Kats, but I think on Halloween, a crunch bar, a king size crunch bar oh, will go crazy. Strong. So a king size crunch bar is your tier one. Sure. I don't know if you can put oh, sizes sorry, in sorry, it, buddy. No, you're cool. I don't know well, if you can put sizes. And this is not traditional, but an honorable mention is, and you are going to hate this too because it's a, a broad thing, but any of the mini packets you get, whether it's Skittles, the gummy bears, any mini packet you get, honorable what mention. What is going on right now? <laughs> what? Sorry, well, honorable mention. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Your tier one and honorable mention was candy. All candy. King size candy bars minis. are goaded. That's a tough you, you one. You might as well just say, bro, they're goaded, but they're not. Candy. <laughs> we'll let the internet decide. We'll let, let the Crabby internet decide. number one. Candy bars, too. <laughs> King size. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're doing one word. I brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Disqualified. <laughs> Untrustworthy. Buddy, there's five of you. You guys couldn't come up with three candies. Like, yeah, you guys that is, that's up. so, yeah, that's, that's wild. Crazy. I and I low key feel like, you can't zoom out and see that you claimed all candies with two yeah. of your slots. It's not about claiming all candies, it's, it's the fact candies. that you get a king size candy <laughs> yeah. bar. It doesn't matter what. He saw that, he saw that Kit Kat uh, Reese's commercial where the little girl comes with the costume. You just got the Kit Kat and the Reese's yeah. and the big ones. That's where he got that from. That's crazy. I know. Yeah. And the Rocky thing doesn't play because it's like claiming all, all Reese's is goes. No, to that one. Rocky thing was, but don't. <laughs> we're on the same page right now. We'll watch the I'm same not, movies I'm together. Not. Let me at least try to explain. He said it's just like me claiming Rocky movies. I'm not claiming all horror movies. It's like taking, like, I'm going to take the king size Reese's, the regular, and the mid, and the mini. Right. All combined, they're going to be my tier one. That's like choosing the Rocky movie. I think you're, I think you're both wrong, but we're just trying to evaluate who's more wrong here. Am I right? I guess that's fair. Okay. Is, is Rocky with movie cl claim? Okay, thank you. That's all I need. Never mind, not fair. Yeah, <laughs> one word unfair. Yeah, I don't even want to do this anymore. That's crazy. They can't just have king size know, candy bars. It's, 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 well, hey, do, hey just, just, do all your, just do all your tiers and all king sizes. No, I don't got McDonald's. However, I will say, I will say, you know what? I'm going to throw that in my honorable mention since our God tier is candy corn. What? No, I, I, yeah. that's fair. Because I think... What? I think it's either... <laughs> and it's more speaking to um, the things, that, the candies that linger on your teeth. I think there's not... You're not having a true Halloween experience, whether it's Milk Duds, Dots, Mike, Mike and Ike's, getting stuck to your teeth after you get done chewing them and trying to scrape them off. I feel like every Halloween has to have that. What are we, what's going on? What did I mess up? 
Yeah. But so my honorable mention, I guess, is going to go to mil simply Milk Duds. But I just want to throw that in there. I think that you're not having a true Halloween experience unless you're scraping some kind of candy that's stuck on your teeth. My tier it? three. Don't get my ideas. That's a header. My tier three. Your boys are chocolate fiend, and I'm going to stick to the script, boys. My tier three is... <laughs> My tier three is a Kit Kat bar. <laughs> Give me them little kitty cat bars. Oh, dude. I love the Kit Kats, bro. Hey, I'm talking my to tier three. I'm talking to <laughs> you. You rip the wrapper and you kind of put that whole thing in your mouth. Kit Kat bar, uh, my tier two, Butterfinger, and my tier one, my tier one. It's not the Reese's peanut butter cup, but it's your Reese's fast break. When you get them little fast breaks in your candy, dude, you're living the fucking dream. And those are my candies. Milk Duds? Honorable mention, Kit Kat, <laughs> my tier two, Butterfinger, my tier one, King, Fast Break. I know you said you're like you're not experiencing it if you're not pulling it off your teeth, but none of your three, you have to pull off your teeth. What do you mean, Milk Duds? You have those honorable mention. Yeah, yeah, because those are my favorite. Like, those are my oh, okay. go-to candies. I, I were about grab. to just say. Yeah, yeah no, I'm just all saying. Of like, them have to be. You know how you're you're scrapping and eating all your favorites, kind of first. You might save a little for last, yeah. but you're getting those fillers in, and the fillers to me are like the milk does, the dots, dots and stuff like that. I, I think you. they're enjoyable, but they're not like my favorites. Yeah, no, for sure, it's I like agree. Throwing, it's like you're sitting there, and then you're like, somebody's on a piss break, you just throw in a little box of nerds. Fire! You know what I'm talking about. Fire. You're at that open. Fire. <laughs> All of them. Hey, they'll never know. They'll never know when they come back no. from that fist break. <laughs> yeah, so what you guys... What, what, what are you laughing so hard about? It was all chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Got his ass. Uh, we're doing one word? Yeah. Chocolate. Fuck. Yeah, that, damn it. Why didn't I just, we just do a collective word for Will. What was your word, Garrett? I mean, I didn't want to say chocolate, but Mitch said chocolate. Loyal. Chocolatier. <laughs> yeah. Predictable. Oh, he's hurt. That's okay. That didn't go according to plan. I just know you like chocolate. Yeah, yeah that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I got in my head there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Safe. Yeah, yeah. Boy knows what he wants. Oh, that chocolate. That's okay. Give me a. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I can't wait. Disagree. Mm. Oh, that's your word. Fuck. Okay. I love it. Um, I'm it. assuming I threw a shot at one of your candy, so I see where this is going. No, not at all. I like. I did, listen. We get. I'll I'll do my tears and then we can yeah, we can get into fair. it. Okay. My tier three, and this is where I said I said it a, a bunch of times. You probably cut it seven times. You only heard heard it once, but I do think there's a big difference between when you're going trick or treating as a kid and what you want to get versus when you get to go to a gas station. Here's the reason why: when I go to a gas station, I want to get some candy. I'm gonna get a bag of the gummies. I guess your boys you like likes the Chewies, the Sour Patch Kid watermelon stuff like that. You don't get that same kind of service when you go to a Halloween trick-or-treating because you get a single, maybe a jumbo size or a king size fucking Sour Patch Kid. It's this big, but it's really not hitting off the way you want to. It's like having one chip. So that, I have to lay down the sword on the gummies and go to my trick-or-treat. So my tier three is the Rolo. I think Rolos are fucking fire. That caramel inside, but the chocolate's just hard enough, and you do get it kind of stuck in your teeth a little bit. I think that's fantastic. Now, I do think there is a place for the gummy kind of experience or the chewies, whatever. I don't know. What's, what's the fucking category for those things? I have no idea. Chewies. Chewies. Where I think there is a place for them is in my tier two, and my tier two is going to be Skittles. They put just enough in that small little bag for you to feel like... I really got something out of this when I ate it. And it kind of goes to what Will said with the nerds, where you can kind of rip it, drain it, and no one ever saw it happen. It was like a little magic trick or something like that. That is where I think they belong. And my tier ones, and I know it's a little bit predictable, but it just hits so much different when you had those. And for me, it was always the first to go was the classic Reese's peanut butter cups. And I want to make those all king size. So that way, 
They're all fucking headers. Now, you're on board. now I'm on board, dude. <laughs> no, those are those are my tears. I'm proud of them. And it's a little bit different from what I've been saying a long time. That's why I had to say like, there's a place. There's a place for those chocolates in my life and that's where they live. Okay, I'm ready, Garrett. Oh, wait, hold on. I have an honorable mention. Let the, it go. The Crunch Bar. I think the Crunch Bar is awesome. Oh, that changes my word. Oh, does it? Okay. The Crunch Bar to me, I think is outstanding. You can chew it and hey, listen, we're no, we're, we're a no pause podcast. But when you put it in your mouth and you kind of suck it and let it all kind of disintegrate, dude. Hit her. Hit her. Delicious. Variety. Proud. Solid. Uh -oh. <laughs> um... Average. He stole your word solid, so you went to average? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's tough because I'm a big Reese's Peanut Butter Cup guy. Mediocre. Yeah. So here's what I was thinking with yours, why I disagreed is I'm not a huge Butterfinger guy. I think the best thing Butterfinger did was have the Simpsons, have Bart Simpson do the commercials. Other than that, the, the, the taste of it never really did it for me. It's all good. And that's... And that's it. I have nothing against you. Yeah. Okay. I think you're the mediocre came in when you threw in the crunch bar. I'm not a big crunch bar guy. It's honorable mention. It's all right. It's part of your it's tier that... talk. Damn, so it's, I really yeah, ruined it. Skittles as a tier two is really high. Like it, your boys are like you said, I'm a chocolatier. I'm a chocolatier. When you're throwing in a sweet candy, it just doesn't jive with me. So that, that it's like a, you're getting a bad grade in my head. So and then you you throw in the Reese's peanut butter cup, it brings you back up. You're right there in the middle. What was your three? Uh, Rolo, 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 Rolo is decent. Rolo is good. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Sneaky yeah. and unique is something that nobody saw coming. You had a little uncertainty factor there, a little shock factor with the Rolo. Yeah. But it's just me. I'm just being really my true like... self. Thank you. Yeah, I think it hits, right? It gives you just enough. But those Sour Patch kids, they don't give you enough in that. See, I, I like this. I like mm. the Skittle little snack pack. Swedish Fish is another one. Fire. Yeah, but they only give you like one fish. And true. But I like the uh, Skittle little snack packs just like randomly throughout the year. Like on a sunny day, you see a snack pack of Skittles laying around. You're like, oh, this is going to hit. But when you're on Halloween and you're trying to divvy it up and you're trying to like go after it, like I'm all about the chocolate. Like I really don't want a whole lot of, again, quick nerd. I'll throw a little nerds box in just for, just, yeah, just by habit. It's like, okay, somebody's, somebody's going to have to eat these. I respect that. Yeah. This was great. Different vibes today. <laughs> well, we would do it after an ad. We are, but the ad that goes into the interview part. I'm not sure which ad that would be. This was a this was a fun little pod though. This was a fun pod. Now we're about to get into. Well, I'm sure we're gonna do an ad read, but we're about to get into the Chris Johnson. Uh, Lindell White podcast. It was fucking awesome. So it was outstanding all the way through. Yeah. The last, how long did we argue about who the best Titan running backs were? For like 30 yeah. minutes. And my man, Chris Johnson's leaning over, pointing at the screen, trying to argue his numbers. It was awesome. Still number one for me right now at the moment. I tried telling him that, but I think he knows the spot's about to get took here in a little bit. Dang. Lindell White, awesome. He told some, uh, how Snoop Dogg used to pick him up. He talked a lot about the Hollywood life at USC, which yeah. some really good intel there. Nice conversation about Pete Carroll. I think you guys are going to all enjoy him. Yeah, holy shit. Um, also, adversities of when you're done playing in the NFL. Yeah. Where your identity struggle. goes. That's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, the struggle. that He was uh, very open yeah. and honest about that. Yeah, and that was kind of right out of the gate after we talked about eating ass. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good all-around podcast. I think it's a good transition, though. Yeah. Because when you eat ass, you kind of feel like you're, at yeah. the end, you're like, I'm, I'm kind of at rock bottom. <laughs> yeah, this is rock bottom. <laughs> yeah, <today>. yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're going to run this ad and then enjoy the episode. Make sure to comment, subscribe, and do all the fun shit and share, engage, all that, all that, all that, boys. High vibes, high vibes. Leave a comment, pro vibes. We interrupt this podcast to bring you another ad read, and that is Ridge Wallet. It's an ultra slim minimalist wallet. It holds 12 cards plus room for cash, which is a huge deal, right? Because we all want a little cash on hand when we're doing things. There's over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber, ca carbon fiber, and burnt titanium. It's made from 
RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pit pockers. Those bastards are everywhere. You need to make sure you're staying safe. And Ridge Wallet helps you do that. It secures anywhere from two to six keys. That's like a keychain too. Separate product. I should have read that. They also have new key cases to help organize your keys. <laughs> it secures anywhere from two to six keys, dude. And if you have more than six keys, you're a janitor. So like, unless you're a janitor, you should get Ridge Wallet. Uh, it organizes your keys in a compact silhouette. Is that the word silhouette? Yeah. Wow, know. dude. Let me try that again and pretend like I said the first time, but still keep it in. It organizes your keys in a compact silhouette and fold out for easy access. There are six colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. Check out their site, ridge.com and use code BUSTIN for 10% off your order. Me, myself, I'm going to get both those things. I need them. Got to have it, dude. Yeah, literally right before you did the ad read, you're like, I actually need to get a wallet. Yeah, and, I'll, and also, back to the episode. Yeah. Now we're talking about weed. <laughs> hey, hey, boss is right a cop. You got to watch out for boss. He definitely keeps us on a straight and narrow. <laughs> definitely. So, uh, your guys' podcast. Talk about yeah. that. How'd you guys get that started? How'd, why'd you guys get that going? Man, it's crazy, man. Like, you know, me and bro, like, we always around each other, man. Like, 24-7 all the time. And we always, like, going back and forth on whatever. It, the topic could be anything. The topic could be is this water better than this water? Whatever, we just going back and forth yeah. about it all the time. And the only thing we was missing was the cameras. You know what I'm saying? Recording yeah. it and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So we was like, you know, we was talking one time. We was like, man, let's do a podcast. And the crazy thing about it is when we first was like, we're going to do it, we was trying to find a name, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We wanted to get away from Smash and Dash because we know we was going to talk about all topics like, Right. Everything, not just football or whatever like that. And then, you know, just um, sending out tweets, like getting people to try to help us find a name and stuff. And it just kept coming back. Everybody's like, man, y'all need to do Smash and Dash, y'all. Because it's all, we already got a following with the Smash and Dash, yeah. or whatever like that. So everybody just kept saying Smash and Dash, Smash and Dash. So that's how we end up naming it Smash and Dash or whatever. Yeah, it only made sense to me. Like, like you said, we try to get away from that because the podcast is more lifestyle. We, mm. uh, it's 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 crazy because you know just naturally something always happens in sports. So you that's what's going to be the topic, you know, especially in locker rooms. So even though we don't want to talk about sports naturally, when you scroll on IG or you know you on uh, the internet, you're gonna see something to do with some sports. So we talk about that, but we talk about any and everything. Women, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for show sure. shopping, you know how much they can't. Not spend money, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's all kind of stuff. It's like, you know, whatever going on. Talk about times at USC, you know. I, I remember when Snoop picked me up one time from class, and, you know, people be wanting to hear about that. So we talk about any and everything. And this is, like, really my right hand. This is my dog, my best friend. That been since 2008, and it's like, shit, just rolled over, man. It only makes sense. Dude, okay, hold, there's a couple things to unpack there. What I we can't do? wait, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm electrostatic right now. <laughs> when you're talking about women, like, what are we doing? We we rating, or are we just yeah, talking we about can, what oh, they yeah, can and can't no, do? We can rate for sure, anything, yeah. nothing matters. Who's number one? Like, uh, women out there right now? About, yeah, number one. Number one, Nikki. He I'm loves, nice. man, loves some Nikki. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, listen, I don't want to get too far into this too quick, but I'm sure there's... <laughs> There's some different types out there. Oh, yeah, when I see Nikki, wa if Nikki's walking away, it's like it's like in a, a museum to look at. Like, wow, what a beautiful painting. Yeah. Right. But like, I'm not doing any damage to that. You know what I'm saying? Why not? I mean, come on. <laughs> come on. Listen, three uh, three hundred pound white dude. Like, right. you, I mean, you know, you seen the office lineman out there. Right. You know, that's a tough little deal. So I see Nikki, I'm like, wow, that's beautiful. I'm sure. Another yeah. man's gonna make her very happy someday. Yeah. You know, but that's right. just that's just not for me. You, Who, who's your number one? Dude, see, if we're going to go away, like, if I'm talking about celebrity crushes, yeah. I got to take you back to that 70s show with Mila Kunis. Yeah. Mila but Kunis. Is a, yeah, ain't yeah. No Mila has been, I think that was all our crush at yeah. one point in time. Brunette, smaller, yeah. that's like, that's like my move right there. Yeah. Right oh, there. Yeah. What are you at? I don't know. I'm trying to think about it. I feel like my first. Oh, Mar is, Margot Robbie. Was that her name too? Oh, yeah, Margot Absolute Robbie, bro. Timer, dude. She yeah. is beautiful. Her and Wolf of Wall Street, I mean, all of it, really, yeah, but her Yeah, it was unfair when she opens the doors in Wolf of Wall Street, and you're like, what are we doing here? Yeah. Like, do I need to go to the bathroom real quick? Yeah. yeah. Who do you think I, your very first, like, crush was? Oh, I'll tell you right now, Rose from Titanic. Really? I, that was oh, the first oh, yeah. pair of boobs yeah. I ever yeah. saw in my life. Yeah. I feel like mine was uh, Carmen Electra. 
Oh my god. Oh yeah, Carmen. Yeah, Carmen. Hey, yeah. Boys out there in the Carmen, internet. Yeah. Early, yeah. Huh? Okay. Yeah, everybody like yeah, Carmen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was yeah, like the main go-to when you were younger. Yeah. You see Pamela? Yeah. It's a huge. Yeah, yeah. one yeah. video out there that you always yeah, try to look at. Yeah, the porn video. Yeah. 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 Oh, I couldn't yeah. wait to watch that. I ain't going <laughs> to lie. That, right. Hey, the celebrity. Nights, you could see that. I was like, oh, that's the lady from TV? Yeah. I need to see them. Right. Yeah, yeah, her, yeah. Kim, Kim Kardashian have one. We've all seen the videos, though. I mean, let's get a little better. Like, let's get some better quality cameras in there. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's a video cassette tape kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have these 4K. No, these things, you put that on there, you're going to see everything. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Everything's going to be dialed in. Oh, no. So do you guys do uh you guys, what what are your guys' segments on Smash and Dash? Do you guys have a Smash and Dash segment? Do you smash it or dash? We definitely do that sometimes. We we do it sometimes. It just depends. I mean, we definitely going, the first like three episodes, I think we did do that. And it was some like we was on there like like do you eat ass and like stuff like that and it's mm. like smashing or passing or dash you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. I think somebody yeah. I think somebody <laughs> smashed I had to dash I ain't on that you know what I mean but somebody was like I'm smashing so that's crazy to me yeah you know what I mean <laughs> but that, I mean this podcast is going right where I wanted this is to go. Exa- this is exactly where I thought it I actually didn't think it would go this way but I'm happy to talk about eating ass yeah thing. oh so you're not about that you're not about eating ass. I mean, yeah, no, nah, not right now. I can't. Nah. That's not. Yeah, not on. That's not really up on my list right Buddy, now. Buddy, I was. Had it happen to you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you questioned everything, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, Bro, man. you got to question everything yeah, when that happens you, to you. You're honest, man. Yeah, but then she yeah, asks. You let her take over. Do you do God's work? Yeah. yeah. Take what you're that's when you see God the most clearly. Yeah. <laughs> you see God the most clearly. Bro, there are some. These are like locker room conversations to a T because I was in a. The locker room one time, and I'm overhearing two dudes talking. And one guy's like, You eat ass? And the guy's like, Yeah, of course you eat ass. Like, I eat ass for sure. And he's like, What about sucking toes? He goes, Oh man, she's got to take a shower yeah, if I'm gonna suck toes. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, you'll eat ass, you'll say right. yes, eating ass, but sucking yeah. toes. You gotta make sure you they gotta shower. move on. You gotta make sure to shower with the toes. Fair. My man drew a line. But, but, but you, you, wanna, you, wanna, you want him to shower too in both situations. In both situations, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Both this way, yeah. You just both go both out situations. for a jog and then you're like, You wanna eat you this? You can't thing. just say, Yeah, I'll eat ass, and then, oh, but the toes, I gotta shower. Like, that's when you. Because if you were to say, yeah, I eat ass and I suck toes, it's like they probably shower before. Yeah. But if you're like, I eat ass and like, but if I'm going to suck toes, they got to shower. That's a questionable yeah. ass. It's like, what are we doing with the ass yeah. thing? Yeah. That's a tough right. deal. That's a tough gig. If he, did, if he did that, then he guaranteed he definitely ate the ass without it being washed. No question. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't even a question. No question. <laughs> you remember being young, sitting there, first couple of years in the league, you go out to South or Tin Roof or something like that, right. bring somebody home. No, Nobody's worried about a shower. No one. You're getting straight to it. You're getting straight to it. Everything. A couple of drinks. This yeah. man is an ultimate SC. He's a scumbag. I guess. Oh, fight on, dude. Yes. Oh, this yeah. Man, he's. Hey, there's I've, no way he said ten roof. All the, 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 I know where he yeah. was going. Oh with yeah, this from the I was job. a big this loser. The ultimate scum. Yeah, 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 I was. Right. I did get pretty scummy my first couple of years. I've I got two kids now. I've dialed it back a little chilling bit, but now, yeah, yeah, I'm chilling now. Married. But the first two years, I was out in these streets big time. Wow. I was getting a little wild out there. He knows that. Oh, yeah, she knows. Okay. She's very, she, we're very, we tell each other everything. Allegedly, I don't know. She was one you know? of them. I think we tell each other like everything. That word, I think yeah. Allegedly. Because they definitely tell you 99% of things. That's okay. It's almost like what, you know, what daddy don't know, don't hurt him. Yeah, I'm you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. I'm with you when you're right now. So if she's not telling me a couple of things, it's okay, because I don't know. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, my feelings are fine. Yeah. Right. It hurts when you think about it, though. Oh, man. Especially when you're in college dating girls. Yeah. And, like, you find right. out they've been doing something. And, like, for, I don't know how y'all were, but if you, someone was cheating on you, I'd have to know everything. <laughs> Every, right, right, know right, right. What right. positions you guys do. What was, like, what I literally hey, broke, oh, wait, bro, what? I broke down, bro. Bro, ain't no way. Once I know you cheat, I don't even want to hear about none of that. Really? Me. Yeah, I want to hear. I don't want to hear. Good for you, man. Yeah. That's a yeah. superpower. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to know. That is a superpower. I got to know. Oh, you got to know. You was sucking him like that, and you did that move. I don't want to know none of that. Bro, Listen, we played, we played Michigan State, and <laughs> after the game, I literally have a boot on and like a, like a wrist thing because I fucked up my wrist and my ankle, and I'm at the bar, and one of my buddies who plays on the hockey team is like, hey, I got to tell you something. Like, your girlfriend, she's been sleeping with one of the, the hockey guys. Oh so I power walked my ass to that house, kicked <laughs> the door down, went to his bedroom, and I like made him call her. Oh. And then two days later, went to his house. And I was like, tell me everything. Tell me everything that happened. Wow. And he told me everything. And bro, everything he said hurt m- more than the last thing. It I'm was so painful. It hurt so you. bad. Wow. Yo, I was, I'm a weirdo it? like that. Nah, I gotta nah, know. Nah, I appreciate you, nah, dude. Nah, I appreciate nah, you. I don't want to hit that. No, no. I understand why you may want to know, but like, man, nah. 
What if she? That's what I'm saying. She that's in there safe. telling you like, yeah, nah. Yeah. Well, me and two other girls is in there, and it was him. And then you like, wait, what? Two other so girls. That would hurt the most. And you didn't do that oh, with me, yeah. but you're doing yeah. it with this new guy. God. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Listen, I understand. I understand where I'm wrong here. I, I get yeah. it. I know. Yeah. I know. I'm like not in the right. Yeah. Right. But everything know. hurt, dude. Are you picking up everything uh, Chris is saying? All right, good. Because I see that microphone sitting a little, oh, yeah. sitting a little far away. Don't let, don't get scared. You can. Nah, put it I'm in now. I'm in now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in now. No. So it's been best buzz since 2008. What sparked no. it off? Like, when, how'd you guys meet? Like, was it like sparks flying right away, or did it take a minute? No. Well, with, well, with me, when I came, well, he was already here. Then I got drafted, and then you know they was coming off. Um, when I was coming in, that's before I got here. I knew about like the <clears throat> USC Texas. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So Vince was here. He was here or whatever. So, like, just oh, me God. getting drafted and me coming in, I'm seeing these guys, you know, they were like celebrities. Yeah. So, as college kids, you know, they were like celebrities. Like yeah. USC with the Reggie Bush, the Lindell White, Vince Young. So, I'm like, man, I come in here, I'm like, damn, I'm with these guys. You know what I'm saying? And then just going from there, and then, like, I stayed in Brentwood. He stayed off, was that Westwood? Yeah, like Green Hills. Oh, yeah. like by Green Hills. So, like, Man, me leaving the facility every day, like going on the way going home, I'm stopping by his house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna hang with Lindell White mm. about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like just going from there, man, and it was crazy. And then like when I got here, his brothers and cousins was yeah. here, and then my brothers was um they moved up here with me. So they used to hang out all the time, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We gone away yeah. games or yeah, at practice. They, all they was with each other, know what I'm saying? So yeah. then, like, you know, getting out of practice and stuff, and after the games, you know, we we wanted to meet up with them, know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, it just been that way the whole time. And then, like, when he ended up leaving or whatever, I was calling him. It was this one situation. I was calling him, like, bro, man, come to, man, come to Nashville. So he kept... Giving me these excuses or whatever. Man, I was depressed like, as fuck. I ain't gonna lie. What, what were you depressed about? I got cut. Was done playing. Yeah. In that moment, you ain't thinking like, especially when you don't get no calls. It's like one year, you like cool. You still working out. You like man, it might be the mm. year. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because you see dogs like Marshawn, AP, and some of them. They do whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come right. back, pick mm -hmm. me up, and you yeah. like man. I ain't get not one call. You know what I'm saying? So you it, it messes with you, and then. You know, this is 2K. I, I seen it, you know what I'm saying? He balled out, and it's just like, man, I can't. What am I going to do up there with him? Like, mm. he's living his best life. Man, I'm, I'm an old retired dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm broke now. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what can I really do? So at the same time, he keep calling me like, man, like, what are you doing? Come out here. I'm making every excuse in the world. I remember this, like, clock where I'm like, oh, man, I got to hang out here. My mom needs me to do this. The dog's over there. He might need to walk him. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> So one day he just finally calls like, hey, listen, Mike Moon, book your ticket. I'm going to see you Friday. I don't want to hear nothing else. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I got yeah. here, and I'll never forget it, man. Like, I was I was hurting and all. And I, the man gave me, like, a couple green cards, like, some money. I'm like, dude, go do get whatever you need. Take these cars. Hang out. And I'm like, man, what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's I'm awesome. Chilling. Wow. And as I'm chilling, he's taking me back out. And I'll never forget it, my birthday, man. He had, like, a little party he threw for me, man. And then he went on stage, and he, like, called me out and did all, you know, like. And I just remember in that moment, like, man, I'm so thankful because I don't know where I would have been. Because, like, life after football is probably the roughest shit in the world, man. I, Rough. It's the yeah. roughest. Because we, our whole life is football. Everything since you were a kid. And right. it's not only that, but. Being picked up by Snoop at college, playing at SC, playing around that team, yeah. being national champions. People dating celebrities yeah. back then. You're Linda USC. White smashing dash here, and then you go to oh. getting cut. Yeah, I'm sure it's like cut. just flipped on your head. You cut. You know what I'm saying? You walking around, mm -hmm. like, man, I you look good, man. Why ain't you? And you like, well, man, I'm one in the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it does something to your psyche, but thank God that he was around because he's like, man, you Lindell. What are you talking about? You go to these games, you look around. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your jersey's like, you can make it. You gotta, you gotta think you're better than that. You, cause you, I grew. He's like, man, I grew up on you. What you mean? So, yeah. And you know, from there, man, it's been that was what like 2012. That was your last was year it? at the Titans. Was it? Okay. Yeah, like 2012. Yeah. yeah I have been calling them since like 2000. Was it, was it like early 11? 11? Yeah. It was it was a long and like, I'm bucking. 
I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm gonna I'm come out there. I'm gonna come hang out. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna I'm get there, man. I'm gonna get there. Right. And everybody like, man, why, what are you doing? Why ain't you here? And I'm like, oh man, I was, yeah, I was right. depressed. That shit was rough. So when you got cut, you went back home? Yeah. I went back home to hang out? Yeah, with the fan. Well, I was in Denver. So mm -hmm. I'm from Denver. I was playing with the Broncos and then I get cut. So that's like even worse. It's the yeah. double smack, you know. Yeah, the like hometown team. Man, hometown, yeah. every time I walk in, and this is like, I'm like, yeah. They've been seeing me their whole life. So now it's like a couple months ago or shit, two weeks ago, it's like, man, we're going to see you on Monday. You know what I mean? Ball yeah. And then now it's like, man, we heard, we heard you got cut. And you just walking around there. And everywhere you go, that's what you hear. So, yeah, it was, it got to a point where I was in my mom's basement, like smoking so much weed. Probably drinking lean every damn day, like mm. you know what I mean. It was like I was floating and didn't didn't I didn't care about like what was gonna happen next. It was to a point where I didn't give a damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like I said, if he didn't call me, ain't no telling what would happen. So yeah. you feel like that's what it was, or do you feel like there were other moments that that showed you like okay, I can I can pivot this way or make oh. this move and get out of the hole that it seemed like you were in. Getting out there and being around. Just him, you know what I mean? Like it was like when I got here, it was it was he treated me like I was still in Dale. Like you can drive whatever car you want, do whatever you need to do, just go out there, like hang out. Yeah. You don't need me, you know what I'm saying? And Did that's you I'm, see that he was struggling? I didn't know. Yeah, I was. I, was I didn't know. You know me, shit. I'm just, you know, I'm still playing. And like like I was saying before, our normal routine was we go to practice. I go to his house, then I go home. Or if we finna go out, me and all my brothers, we get dressed, we come to his house, and we all go out. So that's what I was just used to. So then when he left, it wasn't that no more. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I was calling him, calling like, bro, what you got going on? Because I remember um, he came out here, but he was hurt. I think he, he yeah. tore his Achilles or something. Yeah. He came out here. I had seen him downtown or whatever. And then, like, after that, like, I'm calling, like, bro, when you coming back? Like, you know what I'm saying? Come out here. And, like, it wasn't, it was a thing, like, I'm just, like, come out here for the game or something like that. You know what I'm saying? The crazy thing about it is, like, once he came out here, from then on all the way until I retired, like, he was with me. Like, when I left here, I went to the New York. You know what I'm saying? He was with me. Went to um, Arizona for three years. He was with me the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So it was just crazy. I didn't... <clears throat> I didn't know he was going through what he was going through. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, bro, you tripping, man. I'm like, man, listen, I'm finna call my assistant right now. Yeah. Book his ticket, man. I know if I book his ticket, he ain't just gonna let me spend my money and not get on the flight. Right. So I booked the ticket. I had my assistant call him or whatever like that, and he came, and then ever since then, like, it's just been up. Yeah. Did, did you ever talk to him about you struggling? Like, did you ever catch on and realize you were struggling? The only reason mm. I continue to like Prana is I think it's important. No, like, you're no, this is, like this being is what people need being to know. like yeah. a Lindell White figure. Like, you're right. Like, I remember watching you guys, like, you yeah. play yes, sir. and going through what you're going through post football. Like, I'm just curious the entire dynamic of it. There's like, a lot like, of guys going through what you're going yeah, through right now. Absolutely. Right, right, right. I think, well, he knew, but he, you don't know until. Like, like cuz the roles reversed yeah. later on. Yeah. <clears throat> After 2018, something happened to his he just got cut. Yeah. On some bull crap like he should have still been playing, but yeah. then like you basically don't get you get calls but you ain't playing for no minimum when you two like you know when you certain people you like I ain't doing that no more. Right. Like got to be right. So yeah. it's like when you don't get the calls of the people that you want like he ended up going through it on the back end and then I was there and I'm like, you know, I, I, you know, talk to him about it, like going through it, like you 2K, mm. play 10, and you about to go to the Hall of Fame, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And but he, I think in that moment, that's when he understood like what what he did for me back then. You know what I'm saying? Because he, it took, you don't really understand why you playing. None of us do, because yeah. man, them checks coming in and the women and the lifestyle, that's what it is. That lifestyle, there's nothing like that. I don't care what. I'm, you can make all the money in your world, but being an actual professional athlete, the plane rides, the access you have, there's nothing like that, man. And then when it's cut off, and you be like, damn, I'm just regular Lindell again. But, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But once you hit a certain, like what Will's saying, once you hit a certain point in your life, like there's dudes that grew up on you. Like there's guys that like saw you play, like you'll never just be regular old Lindell anymore. And that's what I had to, you know,
You had to figure that out for yourself. Yeah. Sure. Cause like, I don't know when you guys started playing football, but most kids start playing when they're eight, nine years old. Like you just, mm -hmm. you start playing football and that's all you know. Yeah. Exactly. And then you realize, oh, I'm super fast. Oh, I'm real powerful. I can, I can legit make something happen out of this. And right. it becomes your entire life. Yeah. Exactly. So you go from spending your whole life focused on one thing to being like done. That's yeah. gotta be a yeah, hard yeah, transition. Your entire childhood. Definitely hard. 28, you, you, to get to the league yeah. at 21 to 23. Mm -hmm. to play in a career that just doesn't usually last right. until right. the average career is three years, but let's right. just say 30 years old. Like, right. And then it's done. Like You have more than half of your life left, right. and you spent the entirety hopefully. of it. Right. Hopefully. Right. hopefully. Hopefully you yeah. got 60 more years to live. Damn. Yeah. I hope I don't go to 90. That'd be tough. I mean, That's a long time. I know, but I wouldn't be mad. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I feel you. you know what yeah. I mean? But I, what I'm saying is if you... That's just... 30 is done. Then you got yeah. 60 more. Yeah, your homeboys that we went to school with—they doctors, they chemists, they you know—and right. they've been in a profession for fifteen years right. now. They're, just, they're to, to go off of that, yeah. to go off of that, like when you first get in the league and you're like, I just left everybody in college, and everyone's like has debt. Everyone has to like go and like make it. You're making forty thousand a year, then sixty thousand a year, and then you play as long as y'all did. You're looking at these guys like, okay, now they're making a good living consistently. Like, how did yeah, I do it? How did I do with yeah. my money? Like, what right. what what's the deal? Because yeah. five years ago. Anyone who brought up your name's like, bro, he's killing it. Yeah. Right. He's this, and then eventually it becomes, yeah, man, he had a great career. He's retired now. Yeah, and, and it's just are in their thirties and forties and yeah. making their consistent living. Yeah. And then right. it's like, as an athlete, you come out of it, and you kind of there's this weird shift of like, you don't feel you you don't feel like you can like be around them, yeah. I guess, right, or, right. or you feel like they're looking down on you because yeah. you're now out of it. Sure. Yeah. The weirdest thing too for me is like when I'm playing with all my boys in high school and I go to college, like it's super cool to them, mm. but eventually, like. You go home one time, and it could be like mm. five years after college. It could be three years after college. It could be the first year after college, and like all of a sudden, like your boys like don't even really watch football anymore. They like they've moved on, and like don't really like right, care right. about football the way you're right. like, damn, like you guys aren't mm. in it like this. Yeah. You guys didn't watch the game on Sunday. Like, what do you? Right. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. Like, this, is, this is it, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, and everyone's like, not nah, man. I'm a plumber. <laughs> like, oh, shit. like yeah. I got plum shit. You know what I'm right. saying? I got like, they're, I got like, they're living their home. they're living their lives. Yeah, and they're living their life. Yeah. At first, like. Like you don't like I didn't have this mindset. I wasn't ever thinking like, man, I'm doing so good and them, but like eventually you get to the end yeah. and you're looking and it's like, man, look how well they've done. And something they had no idea what was coming. Like for all of us, it was like in our head written at some point, like, okay, we are going to go to the NFL. We're gonna play in the NFL. Sure. And then we just did it. Like right. they had to like go be like, oh, I'm gonna go to the NFL, be like, oh, I didn't even get a scholarship for college. I gotta go reroute and find something else exactly. to do. And right, they had to maneuver right. through all this adversity that right. Like you were going through, and now you're going through, and Willie, you've been playing for 15 more years. I feel like, dude, like this man's got, a, he's got something going like crazy with the NFL right now. Right. So it's just like a wild we're deal. We're all screwed except for Will. We're all, we're, all, we're, all, we're all screwed. You said we've been right. in the lab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all we need. Yeah, that's all we need. Do you get that credited season? Yeah. You're yeah, 10 Willie, dude. And with that's wild. Yeah, for real. Right. Right. Honestly, like that was that was always a big thing too with the podcast. Is uh, I remember in 2018 playing with playing on the Titans, and I was a backup. And nobody usually when you're a backup, you need somebody to go down if you're going to get filmed to where you can get another opportunity yeah. the next right. year. And so when I didn't get any of that, and I was just a special teams guy. I was like, man, I'm going to play for a minimum next year. Like I don't want to have to be on a roster on a 90 man roster and make the 53 every year. I don't want to have to do that. Um, so I need to start figuring out what I'm curious about or what I enjoy because this is going to start coming at me faster than I realize. Because yeah. when it hits you and it's done, it's it's like it's over. Yeah. And there's a part of me that thought like it might be done then. So I wanted to like get on the podcast wave like mm -hmm. while you're still like, you know, when you're playing, it's you have more flair, you have yeah, more exactly. spice, you exactly. got more to it. Yeah. Your jokes are funny. I say it all the time. Your jokes are funny. You're better looking and you can shake more hands when you're playing. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. then when you're doing it outside of playing or after playing, it just, it, you know, the, you know, the feel like when uh, alumni or other players come in and talk to the team, like sometimes they hit, but sometimes like, yeah. you know how you and the fellas are in the locker room? Right. Man, let it go. Get over right. it. Right. As soon as you get right, in there, right. they're laughing mm -hmm. at the dude like, man, yeah. you're that old ass dude, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a wild deal people start calling you old. And you yeah. literally feel like, oh, I don't even feel like I've been in the league for a couple of years. Yeah. You're like, an oh, old head. Yeah. You're like, come on. Yeah, unk, like, unk. Uh, yeah, dude, that's a tough yeah. thing yeah. to hear. Yeah. That's a yeah. tough thing to hear. Yeah, cold, man. You, were, uh, you were talking earlier, like you guys had, you had your cousin, your brothers, you had your brothers with you. Like, how did that dynamic work when you guys first got in the league? <laughs> was there like any turmoil there at first where people like kind of reaching out a little bit or was it like, this is my obligation to them. They, they deserve this. Well, with me, it was crazy. I ain't gonna even lie. Like, so when I got up here, Right, I um, so I bought a house in Brentwood, ten thousand square feet, big money. Mm. 
First round. First so, round. Four two. So you like Taylor, Taylor knows. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> relax, relax, relax. Yeah. The reason why I asked is I brought two of my buddies from home too, and my brother. And I was like, you know, the show Entourage. Yeah. I see now. I was like, this is gonna be my life, dude. I'm gonna be living like this. Yeah. So it was crazy. So, you know, when you first get here, you got Ricky Men account, then you got Train account. So I got this house. I've never been in it before. Mm -hmm. Right. So my mom came up. She furnished the house and stuff. So as soon as we break camp, I go to the house. Right. I'm in the, I'm like, where the hell? I'm in this big house by myself. Like, I'm hearing shit. <laughs> And I call my mom. Man's getting scared at night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah scared I, listen, at night. I still get scared at night. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. We're getting scared at night. So I had called, I talked to my brother or whatever. I was trying to get him to come up here. He he was undecided. So man, I called my mom. I'm like, man, you gotta call my brother though. They gotta come up here. You gotta convince them to come up here. So she called my brother down. She convinced them they moved up here. And then it was man, it was just crazy. Like, you know, I got three older brothers. So I just been around them all my whole life. Now I'm up here. I can provide for him, like, man, we just, we hanging. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all come up here, y'all good. Y'all ain't got to worry about no bills, no nothing. Come on, we hanging. So it was lovely. I loved it. That's awesome. What are they doing? What do they do now? They uh, So the crazy thing about it, yeah, they, they still here. live here. Yeah, do they really? Yeah. I left yeah. and they still live here. They're yeah. Definitely Nashville does that to you, huh? Yeah, exactly. It really I'm does. Like, it'll so it'll now, take you away. It'll, it'll keep you there. So now I be calling them not trying to convince them to move back to Florida. Yeah. But they ain't going nowhere. You're family. back in Florida now? Yeah, I'm in Florida, Orlando, Damn. yeah. They ever thought about coming back to Nashville and staying full time? With me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought about it. Mm. I thought about it. Not long. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> like not very long. I thought, I thought about, about it. it. Yeah, it had not to be long. like a, a good a business opportunity. Yeah, a good yeah, business but, opportunity, uh, that probably will do it. I don't think I... I don't think I'll come back just to live, just to be here. Yeah. If, the, if it was a nice business opportunity for me, then I would. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, Nashville, I was with a guy yesterday who, who played for the Predators and he just retired. And he was saying like, he was thinking about going home or whatever, but he's like, when I was with the Predators, we went to the Stanley Cup Finals. Like, well, they, he's like cemented himself yeah, in like the yeah. culture of Nashville. For sure, yeah, yeah. He's like, now that I'm retired, like I still get to reap the benefits of like yeah, being man. a part of something and like knowing like people knowing who I am and you know right. so, something as simple as having like an easy time at the DMV or like getting into the dentist easy. Like right. yeah. things just move a little like smoother when you've right. been in a place where you've been able to like make a dent socially. Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah. So I don't know how it is for Florida. I mean, you I mean you're national. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when you're in yeah. Florida, I'm sure stuff's easy yeah. for you there, too. Yeah, it's still all good. Did but, the bill, hey. did, uh, oh, sorry. Go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, did the bills ever get, like, uh, you talked about paying the bills and everything else. Did they get a little tighter, like, later on in the career? Because I feel like, like, this is a conversation I'm always curious about because mm. everybody in the locker room talks about everyone, like, at the end of the day, seven out of ten guys mm. have financial trouble, like, right. years after the league. Mm. And everybody in the locker room at the time swears everybody's doing fine. Like, yeah. swears they, they got yeah. investments going, they got this going. But did it ever get that way for you, like, later in your career or you later in your career? It really wasn't for me because when I left, so I was six years here. When I left, they stayed here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they got their own house, got their own. They then came up here, started families and all. Like, yeah. All that. So, you know what I'm saying? So when I end up leaving and going to New York, in Arizona, it was just me and him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and then not, no, I was here in 10,000 square foot. When I went to New York, it was still a little expensive, but it was cheaper for me because I'm just like in a condo. You know what I'm saying? Then when, when I went to Arizona, I'm in a condo again. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of got cheaper for me when I left. Yeah. You know, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, for me, I mean, I never made that kind of crazy money, and I definitely was one of those guys that just wanted to look out for my family all the time. So as it got later on, yeah, it got like harder, or yeah. like once it once it stopped coming, it's like oh shit. Yeah, like, well, you well, yeah. you try to you, be, you try to let them know, like you be like, hey, listen, I need y'all to. They ain't trying to hear that. Yeah, people get used to it. People get used to it. Yeah, you done, you done, you done, you done <laughs> the easy way off for so long. They like, what you mean? I gotta might have to work again or help with some mortgage or something. And you know, you like, man, yeah, like I. It's four years later, man. Like, how much y'all think this money gonna last? I didn't sign for. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, it, it's a real conversation. That's even for people with that made a lot of money because if you like the lifestyle you live while you're playing is expensive. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Them Miami weekends and Super Bowl weekends it adds up. You know what I mean. So if you're 
hanging like that. You got to just look at it and make sure you're watching yeah. the people watching your money if you do have that because people still, you yeah, know, we hear like, about this all yeah. the time where you think you have money and people were stealing two, three million dollars from you in your face. So it's like, yeah, you just got to make sure you keep them ducks in a row. I don't care how much money you make. And yes, don't spend it. Like, it's okay to... You can spend it on you, but you don't mm -hmm. have to spend it on everybody else. Right. Like, yeah. listen, everybody has the opportunity to make their money. Now, if I look out for you, that's what I want to do, but it's not my obligation. Yeah. Yeah. That all, all that new NIL deal stuff coming in college, they should put something in place. <laughs> Man, I wish. I, 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 yeah. I <laughs> they should put something in place to make these dudes, like, a little more financial, right. have a little more financial well, education. SC, I, I know I can speak for that, but even we was at uh, Clemson earlier. I mean, you got paid at SC for sure, right? I don't, re I don't know. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, come on, we've, been out, we've been out for too long. <laughs> Reggie Bush had a house in Mount, oh, but, like, no, you're all good. You, know, right. Chelsea, you were with Reggie. Like, Chelsea we got us. Yeah, yeah. my big cousin. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. ain't talking about Chancey, though. We talking about... He gave me $100,000. So we tying them other people, man. With grand. So them other people, hard. we ain't talking about chances. We tying them other people. You know, like, that's family. That's, that's family. family. Yeah, he can give you probably. Yeah, when you were at USC, that people. was like USC. When I was in high school in Arizona, I wanted to go to USC or Texas or yeah. any SEC yeah. school besides Vanderbilt, Kentucky. But like, <laughs> Ed, like USC was it, dude. Yeah. And you knew yeah. what was going on, bro. That's it, bro. How are you getting all these dudes into Compton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Right now, he said, "Tell you know." I'm trying to figure out. I don't know. I might have got space. No one's gonna hear this. I wouldn't give a damn. I might have I might have made a, a few dollars. Yeah. I don't really remember. Johnny, uh, put it like this: Johnny Manziel came out was talking about how much money he was making off signing jerseys. And well, stuff Johnny like Manziel was he was he how much was he beginning. making? He was he was social media, y'all. Like he's the beginning of social media. He was the, you know what I'm saying. So yeah. that was the wave. Johnny football. Yeah. He it was amazing. I can only imagine what he was doing in Texas. Uh, Fred Taylor said he had a bag of like what was it? Was it fifty? Fifty. Fifty thousand from Georgia. From, uh, is Georgia or Florida one of yeah. them? Well, he went, he went to Florida, right? Florida. He yeah, went, he went to, Florida. to Florida. Georgia gave it to him. Georgia, Georgia gave it to him and he kept it, dude. Yeah, that's what you got to do, man. And then still went to Florida. Did you wow. ever have any situations like that at SC around that kind of squad? I mean, we know. We just needed to be open about it. He said, I mean, we look at Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're coming that's to you next. You to... Go ahead and get your stories ready. Cause yeah, I ain't going to have yeah, at ECU. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they weren't giving no money away at ECU, oh, yeah, man. I, my mama, like, I hear the story about the $750,000 house. and My mama didn't have all that, so I don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, my, my parents didn't move when they say we was about to um, go to the draft. So I don't know, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? What car did you drive in college? Alexis, GS400. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stipends must have been pretty right. good in California. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. I, I know 1200 a month to get you that. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. That is yeah, wild. He was living where? Bro, I said, oh, I wish I got paid in college. I would have no, took I it. Down, I was downtown. Yeah, he was downtown LA oh, living. Man. Nice we condo. Talk, we talk about coaches. We talk about boosters. What? I don't. I don't really know what a booster or a coach is. I didn't. Have, he doesn't know what a coach is. Just, <laughs> all I know is that I had a nice house or a nice apartment, and when I went in there, like I know that there was somebody left something behind. I don't know if it was for me or not, but I never told anybody that they left it there, and I kept it. So. What's the most amount of money you've seen left somewhere that you, you know? Here's, you know, an, here's an example. Didn't know if it was yours or not. Not that we can yeah. prove or deny, but yeah, what's the yeah. largest amount? Matthew Stafford, seen? when he was a junior, was going to go into the draft, and he went to his mailbox. There was five hundred thousand dollars sitting there for him. Yeah, there was for real. He, yeah, five hundred thousand waiting for him. I probably at his mailbox. At his mailbox, like hundred. And he left it and went to the draft. And made yeah, fifty million. We're getting the moment. We're getting the moment right now. Probably seen what's like the a, most amount you've seen? That's crazy. Maybe about a hundred fifty plus. We talking. We talking. We want them weekend numbers, this man. Is, this is all just yeah. That's cash, rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Oh yes, my sir. God! Getting picked up by Snoop Dogg. Ew. What's man. your best story with Snoop? Well, Wait, how did you I meet went Snoop? On tour with Snoop? So it's crazy. One day, I have a story. Already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's um, already good. One day, um, like we were winning, and you, he, he's always been an ST guy. Him and his wife, um. Shantae, because her cousin actually went to um, USC. He was a, a safety force. Um, so they they were always around the program. And Herschel Dennis was from Long Beach, was the running back. He was pretty big with her. I mean, with um, Snoop, and he knew him. So one time after practice, like, he's like, I want you to go with me somewhere. And I went over there. And, like, as I go over there, um, you know, like, we open up the trailer or whatnot. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know what I'm saying? And we walk in and... All I do is he's like, L motherfucking W. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm looking like, what the f this is, you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. freaking out like, this is Snoop right now. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, 2-1, you know what I mean? He, 
giving me like Colorado gangster. You know, he just yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, How does he know all this shit? But I'm like, right. once you know him, you understand that football is what he does. So he that he knows everybody like that. And he's you know he's like, man, you cold. And we just start talking, and I'm on that plane. I mean, on the something like this. Uh, Getting so high, it's ridiculous with Snoop. And I ain't no way I was going to turn down that fade. And he passing his one. I'm grabbing that one. I'm hitting it. And I just remember at one point, I know I fell asleep for at least 30 minutes, but yeah. he probably was used to it because that kush was crazy strong. I'm coming from Colorado, so. He's killing people. Man, he was. He's killing I'm people out there. Before it became super exotic, all the crazy names, it was just some OG kush. And that shit used to pound me. I'm like, man. So the, I'm in there and they're just hanging. And then I remember the next day, he's like, man, you come out to the house and come hang out. We're cooking all that. And I'm like, wait, what? And we had the sidekicks. And, you and know that was the best phone. I swear. And yeah. he had the Blackberry yeah. Pearl. Those yeah, phones we all had, had, yeah. like, the info. We send, like, like we was, it was crazy, man. And the next day, we pull up to the house behind the gates. And I'm just like, this is fucking nuts. I'm hanging out with Snoop Dogg. Were you a little bit nervous to go back to the house, knowing you were going to get so high again? Um, nah, see, then... I would have been terrified. Like, I, was, I, can't, uh, I can't go through that again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I was ready. And then I'm like, nah, I got something for that. I'm a, I am I know how to pace myself. I ain't got to hit every blunt. You know yeah. what I mean? I, one time, pass it and get it off me, man. But nah, I was, I was 18. I was so anxious to go to Snoop Dogg's house. Yeah. Right. Then I met, you know... Um, Corday and um, you know um, his kids Corey and all them like I, like I was I knew them you know what I'm saying I'm hanging out with them they coming to the games they wearing my jerseys and stuff. it was crazy man um, his wife Shante was like she was one of our big sisters she would come pick us up you know get us some food or whatever like she was nice as hell man it was crazy I was just like I can't believe this is my life and then wow that was like my freshman year so the whole time I'm at USC I'm with Snoop. This this yeah. never stops. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He picks me up from class. Like I'll never forget the girls that came in there. Like man, Snoop Dogg's outside. <laughs> like you, you walk, know, take man. your book bag, yeah. walk out there. I, I did. We had class checkers and all. At that point, I didn't care, man. Yeah. I remember Snoop or Pete calling and I'm like, man, is Lindell with you? And he's like, man, shut up, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll never forget it. How did Pete handle that? <laughs> well, he was mad as hell. Pete probably just... Pete called Snoop and Snoop said that to Pete? Yeah. What'd he say? What'd he say to Pete? We'll have to roll <laughs> yeah, like, 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 like. <laughs> <laughs> He said that's good. <laughs> the funniest shit ever, man. <laughs> and then, yeah, Pete was pissed off at me. Me and Pete had a relationship like that, though, man. Like, he was my guy, but at the yeah. same time, he knew. Like, I, I just wasn't under that same Pete shit. He didn't woo me like he wooed everybody. He else. wooed the hell out of me, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went out there for a junior day, and I, he gave me a hug when I first met him. I was like, yes. Yeah, you know what I mean? No, doing that. Now, the man know how to get it out tonight. Bro, like, he does. The man, he's the ultimate. He, I call him the finesse guy, because he can he can make anything look like something else now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, he got up out of there right before it got a little dicey. Yeah, it's, 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 what a genius. It makes sense, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. And all, so you know the coach is getting in trouble. I'm like, how did the running back coach, if the running back coach knows something, then somebody else knows something. Not Pete. Not Pete at Not all. Not Pete. <laughs> he was gone, dude. He was out of there. <laughs> Talking about went up there and got that good money. Dude, and he's killing at Seattle now. He had Geno Smith as right. a quarterback. Gino. He's got him looking like that first rounder. Yeah, he got him looking, yeah, yeah. He, he got, got Gino, Gino looking, looking, looking good. good. Everybody yeah. in Seattle's so happy. He Russell. got yeah. Russ looking like, yeah. man, Bronco country ain't riding. No, they are not riding right now. Poo LaRue, bro. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. looking bad, dude. Yeah. yeah, Pete's a stud. He's a stud. Yeah, that's my man. guy. People always ask me about him and, like, my time with him. And it's like, man, I wouldn't trade that shit for the world. Like, what we did and accomplished is, like, why would I never? I, I only wanted to play for him then. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that was also before it became Pete Carroll. Yeah. You know what I mean? Once you win back to back and you play in the three straight national champions and then you, you know, like that's the Pete Carroll. I, that's Pete Carroll now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I knew him when he, like you said, when you come into in your mom's room and he's, you know, honest with you and he's telling the truth. I knew his wife. I knew Brennan Carroll. I knew his, mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm staying at the beach house. This is like, you know what I'm saying? So like right. I knew him and then it, he traded for me in Seattle, and then he cut me. <laughs> that was a crazy story. <laughs> Man, and then How did that conversation go when he cut you? Up Marshawn Lynch. How weird is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like, Marshawn's pretty good. I mean, but you picked the same. Like, yeah. come on, at that time, it's like, bro, I talk shit, he talks shit. You yeah. know what I mean? But that conversation was like a crazy one. I cussed his ass out, man, because I was so angry at him because, like, man, I know the NFL was a business, but what are you thinking when you playing with a guy that knew you since you was a baby? Yeah. Like, man, you've been knowing me. Like, so I would have thought the way he cut me was a piece of shit. Man, I'm literally, 
I just practiced OTAs. This is f Memorial Weekend, y'all. Memorial. It's supposed so to be a great know, weekend. We're going to Vegas. Yeah. Everybody's going yeah. to Vegas. He knows that. Man, I'm walking off the field. It's me, Mike Williams, Kenichi Daisy, and Steve Sarkeesian, because Sark was coaching for Washington at the time. So it's like a big-ass SC reunion. I hug him. I'll never forget. He's like, all right, man, enjoy, enjoy your time. <laughs> Do all that. I'm like, all right, yeah. cool, Pete. I'll see you later. Like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I land in Vegas. I go to the hotel, you guys. That's a true-ass story. I'm looking at Sports Center with all... Imagine being there with every one of your old teammates or whoever. Yeah. What? He cut. That's how you found out you got cut? What? And he <laughs> hugged you. He hugged you. He was like, hey, man, have oh, a great yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's the same day, though, right? It's the same day. It's the same day. Oh, same, my this God. Is, this is four hours later. I was five from Seattle to Vegas. So I go on TV, and I'm looking. This never forget it, because Drew calling me, Drew Rosenhaus. This is maybe like an hour after I land in Vegas, but I'll go down there, and Drew's like blowing me up, and I'm like, what the fuck does he want? Mm -hmm. And he, um, finally, I answered. He's like, man, what you do down there? I'm like... I don't know, but clearly I'm seeing it. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I would have thought at least he would have called me. I'm like, I, he don't owe me shit. Let's be real. Like, you know, once you're in this business, you know they don't owe you anything. But I, my relationship with him thought he would at least call me. Like, man, listen, whatever you did at practice, so well, your mind ain't here. I don't want you on the team right now. I don't think you're ready for what I got. Yeah. I could have, I would have handled it way better. But to see my name on TV and not know who you are, like, that shit was cowardice to me. Like, to me, that was like, and I, I that's what I expressed to him. I MF'd him. You I, talk, oh, you did speak to him? What? I called him, yeah. Really? He picked up? Yeah, yeah he, he knew he had to. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know if I would have picked up. I'd have been like, yeah, like I'll he, get that on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get that on the weekend. Too, but he's, that's what I'm saying. He's a finesse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, man, you know, he's doing all that shit. And I'm just like so angry. Mm -hmm. But I know who this guy is. Right. So, like, I don't know why I'm that angry. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I know who he is. It's the same guy. Like, I know him, but it, still, I would play for that guy all over again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It's I just would, a moment of being that angry. Like that Seattle shit? Nah, I would have never, no. I would have never left Tennessee. I would have told Jeff Fisher, no, I ain't going. I'm but, but if you're getting traded, don't you have to go? I, mean, I don't have to show up. Yeah. But I think like, he requested oh, remember, it. Remember, I think Gronk, he requested yeah, was getting uh, traded oh, yeah, to Detroit, could, right? He I'm said not, they would have traded me to Detroit. I'm retiring. Yeah. That's what I'm that's saying. That's crazy. You requested, also, you requested a trade, yes. right? But listen, that's oh, what you I mean. Yeah, yeah, you know, requested. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but uh, yeah, I was being young and dumb back then. But also, you got to think, this you is 2K. A trade. But it's 2K. But also, yeah, when I get a re when I request a trade, he just ran for 2K. You damn right. I better get the hell up out of here. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> at the same time, you're saying it wasn't anything but no, that was... But knowing uh, what I know yeah, now, mm. I would have took my Rockefeller hush-up money, man. You know what I'm saying? Give yeah. me my little four or five million a year. He's the guy. I'm okay to backing him up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't need CT, although we probably all got it, but you know what I'm saying? Well, hold on, like, hold on, hold on. You know? Yeah. Hey, don't put the evil on us. Don't, don't, don't put the evil on us. Hey, I'm just being... You know yeah. <laughs> Stuff for that. Yeah, man, but yeah, like oh, I, I asked Jeff, and I can't lie, me and Jeff, I had a, re a great relationship with Fish, man. He was, Seems like everyone did. Seems like everyone yeah. loved Jeff. Hello, he was a good Jeff. Dude, and I called him one day, like, man, like, what do you, what do you think I should do about the situation? He was like, man, Linda, whatever you really want to do, he's like, it's ultimately up to you. Mm. He was like, man, you, you know what he's doing right now. It's not like we're gonna bench him right now. You will yeah. definitely still get carries, but I'm thinking at this time I'm still in number one. Right. So I'm like, yeah, I need a, yeah, I need a, I need a fresh start somewhere, and then. On draft day, I get called from Pete. Y'all don't understand. I, I'm ecstatic. I'm like, damn, my old coach just traded for me. Right, yeah, right, right, yeah, that'd be right, sick. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. You got a great relationship with him. You think it's good now? Second round pick. I'm like, I'm going back to home. Yeah. And all the fucking coaches are there, y'all. The same mm -hmm. guys from SC are there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so so smart getting out of there. It's, mm -hmm. And it's crazy because, like, yeah, like, I think they, I'm in a league now, guys. I'm not that little Lindell. You know what I'm saying? Like right. y'all new here. Y'all mm -hmm. are rookies in the league. Like how you gonna? You know what I'm saying? I know you're a coach, but you're a rookie coach now. Yeah. Don't come in here. Like, and it was crazy. He went up to Seattle, cutting everybody. It was like me, Lofa Tatupu, TJ Hoosman. Like he was trying to get like you know what I mean people that wasn't on that shit that he was on. He was like, yeah, they gotta go. Yeah. But you know, like. Man, I just thought it was going to be a match made. Like, I just knew it because I know the offense. Like, I know what the hell is going on. My old right. coach, Sherman, was the right. my coach my rookie year was the ro the running back coach now there at, you know, Seattle. So I'm mm -hmm. just thinking it. We had Quinton Ganther out there with me. Kevin Vickerson got traded with. So I'm like, man, I'll be cool. I got people here with me. Yeah, all right. <laughs> mm -hmm. What? I'm cut. Yeah. <laughs> 
What? Yeah, it sounds like he could have done that a lot better. Bro, it's on the TV, on ESPN. At least even at the end of that there practice, you. hey, man, come up to the office real quick. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, you know, that's if there's anything you did that led to it, like you feel like you slacked off the opportunity a little bit, I knowing was, like you were going back to all your old coaches, you're kind of yeah, the big dog on the Longer leash. Yeah. Yeah, I probably, I probably, yeah, I probably, yeah, I probably did do that. Not knowingly, but right, yeah. at the time, yeah. yeah. I probably thought I was, like you said, the big dog around it, but I'm, yeah, like you said, these are my strength coach from, I've been knowing y'all for the yeah. last, this 10 years, what are you talking about? Yeah. If there is an issue, y'all should be like, Lindell, let me holler at be you. Be able to bring second. you in the room. Yeah, right. Right. the new guy that y'all come in and you ain't like, you know my mom. Y'all sent me, you know my grandma sick. Like, y'all knew, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, what are you talking about? Then, man, so you cut me, man, and it's crazy. I went home. <laughs> I'm in Denver. Just <laughs> chilling, like, you know what I'm saying? How'd the rest of that weekend in Vegas go? Oh, you I shake it off? You know, yes and no. Yeah, it's he hard it to off. shake it off. But I'm um, yeah, I yeah. probably I don't know. I think I did some Molly and all kind of shit. So yeah. of course I shake it off. You're feeling a whole lot better, but huh? Yeah, I was trying to shake it. I was trying to hang out. Like, yeah. But then you know, imagine that Molly and you realize your ass got cut. You yeah. Like, well, you don't realize you got cut on Molly until Molly's gone. <laughs> no, yeah, you no, wake no. up the next morning no, 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 like, oh, my life's over. No, over. you yeah. notice. Oh. With, I'm with Reggie. I'm with CJ. I'm with. I'm with everybody in the league. Yeah, Don and McNabb. There go Javon Kirsten. Yeah. Man. Guess who? Guess who cut though? Hang yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So naturally, oh, that Molly started getting you over there. Like, they like you. All right, you all right, man. <laughs> I ain't paying for shit though this weekend. <laughs> Fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, you didn't pay for a thing, did you? Not nothing. I ain't got nothing, man. Nothing, yeah. Nothing, man. So, <laughs> how did you feel for him? You were with him in my, Vegas? I think my dog, he knew, so he ain't. Yeah, he ain't I was with him, but right, yeah. He's been punking the guy. He's been getting all kind of free money all year. I ain't yeah. coming to camp unless y'all give me five more. So he like, yeah, I got you, don't worry. I'm like, yeah. this a bitch, but I'm playing the weekend. He said he was punking the Titans. <laughs> punking the Titans. Was there any? Was there ever any like uh, animosity with y'all two in the room? Like as he started to take over the uh, RB one? Hell no, bro. That's what's so crazy. Oh. Let me be real with it. And this is for any kid or anybody looking out there. Like you can't be mad at greatness. I play with Reggie Bush and Chris Johnson. Like how? How? Like imagine that as in your career. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. But also, I got to witness some of the dopest. You know what I mean two of the greatest running backs ever, but they also helped me elevate my game. So, like, and I seen how hard this man worked, y'all. Like, I was one of them dudes at the Titans, like, yes, on Monday, yes, as soon as they say you can break, I'm breaking. I'm trying yeah. to go to, you know, hang out Mondays. I'm trying to get tipsy and have a good time, whatever. I walk by the rooms, he and, you know, the good boy, you know what I mean? Finessing. <laughs> Come on, bro. Dog in there. Nigga, check the cameras. Make sure the doors are open. Make sure the doors are open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In there, check. He ain't really watching. Nothing. Bro, I'm watching, bro. I'm watching. The man I'm probably texting more than anything, but, I'm watching. you know, the look. And then you go back into the, the training room. You're like, what's going on, dog? I thought you said you about the meeting. Yeah, you got to be. I'm going to see him about two hours. I'm like, what? I never caught on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah, naturally, when you see it a year later, nigga, mm. you like, it makes sense. <laughs> But finessing, you say, no. <laughs> but no, nah, again, you can't, I can't be mad at that. Yeah. That's hard work. That's dedication. Like you said, he came from ECU. Maybe my USC and being that big dog probably got to me. You know what I mean? He had to work a little harder. He was on a, he wasn't on the radar. He wasn't Reggie. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's so, and then coming there and seeing that, like, he's like, I'm playing with Linda. I probably got to turn up anyway. You know what I'm saying? So, and he was cold. I mean, the first game I ever seen him play, what was the preseason? Did you play the right? Was Rounds. It Rounds yeah, game. Right. Mm. Man. I mean, you ran for over 1,000 your rookie year, right? Yeah. I mean, this basically, you're uh, right, on Bro, the first, I'm telling you from the first preseason game, if you under, if y'all know football, man, if, when you see how he boom, boom, and ran over it, dude, and kept going, like, was it 60, 69 or something? I was like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. You like, think I'm in trouble. Man, in my head, I'm like, how the hell? Like, yeah. how do I go from Reggie to this dude? <laughs> yeah, that's got to be but fucking running, tough. Man, he running crazy. Yeah. It ain't like, it ain't no, I'm bouncing. It's like, I'm trying to drop the shoulder. I'm like, how does little dude want to run with power all of a sudden? Yeah. I was ridiculous. 100, bro. I'm trying to little dude. I was 190. Yeah. On a great day. On a great uh, day. Yeah, he lying or telling the truth? Uh, he lying. Okay. He, he lying. Ask bro, Marcy. go look at, ask Marcy. him. Steve, yeah, yeah. Well, Steve used to help him with his weight, too. That's what I'm oh, trying to say. Oh, ask him. I wasn't so allowed. Watterson? To, yeah. Listen, yeah, Watterson put the five pound plate in your pocket. I, but I he wasn't, wasn't allowed. To, yeah. No, I wasn't allowed to be under 195, though. Okay, well, so, okay, 195. Which is under 200, but yeah, I get what you're saying. 
I went allowed. I would have got fined if I was on the 195. Ain't gonna lie though, but the crazy thing, he looked out for me. The Fisher crazy thing, my him, man. The, the yeah, I gang. heard some crazy stuff about Fisher. Like, uh, Brit, Kenny Britt would go into Fisher's office, be like, I'm not working out today. And be like, all right. I don't know about that. Really? It wasn't like, people wasn't just thugging out like that. But just, I mean, if yeah, you had a relationship with it like that, like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure he'll probably be like, man, chill yeah. out today. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Uh, Fish was like that. And you didn't have to do that to Fish because he understood yeah. the vibe of the team. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's got to be, that's a yeah. tough situation. He had to witness greatness, though. Witness, and I got to see like I seen two thousand yards. Like you know, that's like crazy. Yeah, I've seen it. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah, it's only happened eight times. And that's our, pretty incredible. Uh, and I was on the Titans it. too. You hear me? That's wild. That's incredible. Yeah, and I've seen it. Mm. I watched it. All most all purpose yards in the history of the game. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Oh, man, man bro. going going to that two thousand yard thing when you were a couple years ago when Derek was running and he was going on the mission for two thousand. Yeah. What was your like? How did you feel about it? Were you just like, all right, get 2,000, but don't break my 2,000? Nah, I wanted to, yeah, yeah. like, man. You wanted like, him to get the record record. Yeah, like, man, I used to talk, like, not used to, I still talk to him all the time, but, like, especially that year when he was going, yeah. I used to talk to him for every game. Really? Like, every game. And it was crazy because, not last year, I think it was two years before, like, before they was feeding him like mm -hmm. that. I came here to an alumni weekend, and we was here, and I was, I forgot who I was talking to. I think I was talking to Art at the time. One of the coaches, I'm like, man, y'all have to feed Derek. Because yeah. at this time, they was, you yeah. know, was DeMar five was carries. Uh, uh, DeMar DeMarco Murray. DeMarco Murray. Yeah, they was Which he, still, he went 1,600. He, yeah, he, yeah, he went 1,600. Yeah. And, like, they was ready to give up on Derek. Mm -hmm. They was ready to give up yeah. on Derek. I'm like, man, trust me. I know they were when Deion Lewis was here. Yes. Yeah, because Derek exactly. got Derek got. I don't know if the bench is the right word, but he was. I mean, sort of. Remember, we'd be in the locker room. Yeah, Derek room. was starting. Yeah, Derek was mad yeah, as he, hell. Yeah, he was. He yeah, was he mad, was, yeah. man. Yeah, I'm like, man, he's the type of back. You got I'm like, we're him. different. We're not the same size, but I'm like, he's kind of like me because we're the type of backs. You can't give us five carries here, five carry there. Like, man, feed him. You got to feed him. Let him get in the groove. You know what I'm saying? Give him mm -hmm. 20, 25 touches, 30 touches. I'm like. Once y'all do that, y'all gonna see what type of player he is. Yeah. And then that next year, that's when they started giving them carries. Yeah, 2019, 2020, he went off. He went crazy. Yeah, he was, wow. You know what I'm saying? And it's just wild because they was they was ready to give up on him. Isn't that crazy? Well, the, they was ready to give up on Derek. Like the, but the world kind of like, like everybody was kind of like, where's, you know, Derek? Where's Derek? Derek Heisman like, Trophy yeah, winner. Like, and they was, that's what they were saying at the mm -hmm. time. They were like all the Bama backs, like, yeah, they'll do good, and you know, and it, and get the awards, but then they get in the league, you know, somehow, some way they fall off. But then all of a sudden, Trent man, Richardson was right before right. him. And yeah, Trent was, yeah, that was, was a yeah. huge fall. That was tough. Yeah, that was it's tough. Such you kind of just accumulate the baggage that a player has yeah. before you. But Alabama's like, got the most busts in yeah. the league. But I also I mean, want to know, like, how. <laughs> they have so many more draft picks than everybody else. Yeah, playing. yeah, but right. still, you know, probably more of a percentage, though, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I, I mean, so he hits the 2,000 yards, mm -hmm. which brings us to the topic of who's the best back in Tennessee history. The best back? Best back. The best running back. Yeah, who is the best there's three running to, back? There's really three to go Tennessee off of, right? History. There's Tennessee Titans four. history. Tennessee oh. Titans history. Or Oiler Titans. I mean, Oiler, yeah, yeah, Oiler that Titans. Matters, yeah. I mean, you got to put Earl C. Earl is Earl. Earl. I know, but I, I mean... Because yeah. so you tweeted yesterday, you said uh, Derek is already the GOAT, but today he cements his GOATness in the... In yeah, he the, didn't, he didn't get those two touchdowns I needed him to get. Killed my fantasy. He killed. <laughs> and I got 16 points. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's solid still, but. Oh. This man be on there, too. I, this, I, yeah. He don't watch the game for nothing other than, man, did he, yeah, who scored? You know what I mean? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I had Travis Kelsey. He scored a touchdown. They called it back for holding. Yeah, yeah, I, was like, I, saw that. I saw that touchdown, like, too. Yeah. But, all right, let's just go. You, go, mean, you want to do, you, you want to say? My order? Yeah, yeah, what's your order? So, I'm just going to go Titans, because I don't know enough about. Yeah, we're going stuff like that. Who you? I would go Derek one. I would go you two, and Eddie George three. Not and that. Not only when right, I said that. Right, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. He plays. I said that. He's I had to look in your eyes when I said that because it hurt me to say it to you when we just met. But that was why. Okay, oh, yes, it is though. How? Why is? Why is Derek your one? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Before we get in that, what's your order? One through three. One through three. Yeah. I would go me, Derek, then Eddie. Okay. Me. Um, I'm saying you, Eddie, then Derek. Oh. I know that Eddie 
didn't miss for like the first eight years. He didn't miss games. Me neither. That's, That's what I'm song. trying to tell you. See, but, now hold on. If we're talking, even you, so you know your history. Look at some stats real Let's quick. Let's do this. Because he's probably one of, I don't know, five or six players to start off his first six, seven seasons with over 1,000 yards. Right. So that's yeah. what I'm What's saying. Your, how many so yards you, you rush for overall? Overall, I oh, think. No, just, just, sorry, just like with the right Titans. Right under 10,000. Just with the Titans? Yeah. I think with the Titans, like 7,000. 7,000. With the Titans. Titans. And Derek's at 7,000 now. How many years has he been with the Titans? This is his yeah. seventh year. Okay. And he missed. Eddie George, seven out of the eight years with Tennessee, over, over 1,000. Okay. Yeah, Eddie was a different animal. I mean, basically, Eddie his whole was. career besides him. And this is no disrespect to Eddie. I hope people, he's not seeing oh, no, this but thinking. You see, that's, you gotta, Eddie, that's my you guy. Play, but you play with Derek. I play with Derek, yeah. yeah okay. I play with Derek. So, yeah, so that's my question. Why, 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 is, why Derek first? Yeah, why is Derek list? number one? Uh, the reason why I think Derek is one of the most dominant running backs of all time. Right. I think that I think his two thousand yards. Well, I know you got the two thousand yards, but I think um, if you play thirty games, you have thirty four hundred yards and thirty touchdowns. In his last thirty games, he's done that, and he's right. done that like that consistently. Right. I know his first two years obviously weren't what you wanted him to be because he had guys in front of him and the whole Deion Lewis thing. I just think. Um, it's probably got to be some recency bias too. I mean, I played, I've, I've played with him. I helped him get right, those yards. You right, know right, 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 right. Yeah. So, I think from a running back, handing the ball off, here's the ball, go run. He's he's probably top five back ever. Right. But then I think the threat you had of catching the ball, Eddie had to catching the ball, and that way I can see what where the edge comes there. Right. I can see I can see the edge, but I still got to go, Derek. It's my boy. That's my right. guy. Oh, that's most not a whole, whole lot of information I gave up game. there. Yeah. Not a whole lot of information I just gave up. Right. <laughs> nah, <laughs> and I, I look. No, Derek, that's my guy, man. Sure. That's my guy. He, he's a man. Beast. He's a beast. He's a star. You know what I'm saying. The and reason, if you look at him right now, he's like, he's only like Ben Jones is in year eleven, the center. Everybody else is under year four. Like right. he's playing with dudes that don't have a lot of experience. In the last four games or three games, he's still ripping off over 100 yards. Right, right. You know? And he hasn't even catch a stride yet. He, like, he's the only dude I've ever seen that the more you give him the ball later in the season, the stronger and more more dominant he gets. He gets stronger and stronger. And bro, look at him in the playoffs, stronger. too. Yeah, the playoffs. I mean, with that 2019, crazy. Patriots oh. went crazy. Baltimore right. went crazy. Like, he's just, it was insane. Yeah, it was it's insane crazy, to yeah. see. So it's hard for me to sit here being a part of all that, watching all that, and then having to say, all right, like, this guy, this person's got the edge. Yeah, yeah. hey, cause get yeah, wet, cause, like, cause cause get wet. You ain't play with me though. That's true. Yeah. But hang on, hang on. Yeah. Hang on. I, yeah. I, think I bet like, if Michael Ruse was on this in this room right now, he'd say you. Yeah, he would definitely. say I know Mike would say that. Yeah. You think so? Just with Mike, but I'm, man, because was I'm, you there yesterday? Yeah, yeah he was yeah. there. Yeah, but that's the reason why I would say me number one. I would. I I had twenty five hundred yards. Nobody ever done that. That's catching and, and running, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's impressive. You know what I'm saying? 2,500 yards. Yeah, that is right. fucking crazy. Yeah. The year I went for 2,000 yards, I had 500 receiving yards. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> the way you said, hey, Will, back me up. I had 500 yards and 500 receiving. 500 receiving. Yeah. I, like, I. What's your order? I respectfully disagree with the Derek. I think Derek is three on the list when you talk history of the Titans. I think if there's one year, if you're going to have one year with one running back, it's kind of like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning argument. I'd take Manning in one year over Tom Brady, but collectively in a career, you're not going to, you're not going to argue Tom Brady. I think I. You just I, made this man so happy with that damn what? comment about. Did you say Peyton over Tom? Y'all got to be... Hang on, hang on. Let me finish, though. I don't know. But I think the same thing with Derek. I mean, that 2500 all-purpose, that's... Now that I'm thinking about that, I'm like, that's kind of tough. But Derek's... Because you have him as a receiving Derek's threat, too. One, yeah, Derek's one year of going over 2000. It's like, who was stopping that man at all? No one. But in, his, his, in, in the history of being a Titan, he only has, right at the moment, three years of over 1,000 yards. You're talking to, like, he's had six. his first six. Like, Derek, it took three years to get to 1,000. He did it his rookie year. Eddie George, eight out of his nine years, or mm -hmm. seven out of his yeah. eight years, was a 1,000-yard runner. Like, every so Derek's year. Derek's three. I would say Derek's three in the history of Tennessee Titans. Derek's my boy. Like, again, this is hard to say. I know he's, he's a tier one. He watches this podcast. I would take Derek in one year of the three running backs. Like, hey, if we're going to hand the ball off, we're going to build it around the run game. No disrespect to you because mm. you are a fucking king in your own right. 
I would take Derek, but in history, I think Derek is three. I would probably go the 2,500 kind of makes it confusing because outside of that, running the ball, I would say it goes Eddie, you, mm. Derek. But with the receiving, it's like, you know, take your pick. They're all they're all great. Mm -hmm. But that's my – I think it's hard to say Derek's the top all five studs. most dominant running back ever because, again, all he's, studs. Got, he's got a career to put together more – he's got to continue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. dominant. It's like, yeah, he's a fucking you're, – you're running, you're running into the Aaron Donald argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like okay. People say Aaron Donald's the most dominant dude of all time. I said, well, he needs more years to prove that. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're, tacking, you're of... stacking him up against like Reggie White and those guys who have just a resume right. year right. after year. I hear that. But yeah, I, uh -uh. yeah I but know. when I come about it, like my thing is like, I wonder, I, I wonder what it was, like why why they been, why they didn't been give Derek the, the keys to the, you know what I'm saying, to the car, like. Yeah, why? Well, what, what, back here is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why wasn't was paying him? No, 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 no. Why, why wasn't he starting? Like, clearly, we know Derek was the guy. Oh, you know yeah. When, 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 when Derek, like the first three, the, yeah, the first, first three years, years, yeah. I think when Derek first came in, Demarco Murray, we traded for a fourth round pick from the Eagles. He, Demarco comes in. He was coming off the Cowboys year he was too. Coming off the, well, he was yeah, yeah, Cowboys yeah, yeah. and went to the Eagles. Had a tough year at the Eagles. Not as yeah, good of a year. He had and then he, that's why we got him for a fourth round pick. He that comes in. Washington. Now you have a back who a knows year. knows all the systems, like just knows ball better. Probably at that point. Yeah. Right. And yeah, I think exactly. like like there's things that you have that are undeniable. Your quickness and speed were undeniable. Like you could put you on the field and be like, all right, this guy's gonna figure it out. He's gonna find the hole somewhere. Right. Derek is a guy that. If you get him into his fourth or fifth step and keep that line of scrimmage clean, that's when he gets the yards. Mm -hmm. That's when he's going to make those dominant runs. So I think with Demarco, it's easier to plug and play him in the right. beginning with right. Derek trying to pick up. Now I'm I'm talking out of my ass right now. I really yeah. don't know. I'm just mm -hmm. this is my assumption. Yeah. And I think that, this was the year before you got there. No, I've, I've been here for nine. Right, but I'm saying when you say you're talking out of your ass, are you talking about a year right before you got there? Or are you talking about like when you were here? No, when I was here, Derek got drafted in. 16? I was I got Justin. Oh, 14. yeah, yeah. What am I talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're oh, talking about. That's big. Right. <laughs> that's that's kind of crazy. That's kind of disrespectful. Um, <laughs> well, I'm just so, saying you're not really talking out of your ass as much then. Well, the only reason why I say I'm talking about, I might yeah, be talking yeah, out of my yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only reason why I'm saying that is because I wasn't in Derek's head. I don't know what he was picking up and not picking up. I was oh, in that running okay. back's room. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm making an, a bunch of assumptions gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. saying, hey, well, how is this really working? Then the next year, I'm not, I don't know. I think it kind of goes to what you were saying before. Like, you guys aren't the kind of backs you give five touches to. Right. And we were still kind of transitioning from like, we were running the ball a lot, but we were running a lot more duo, a lot more gap scheme, a lot more stuff that, I, you know, for whatever reason, Dion was doing a better job of in the beginning. But I don't, I'm not judging Derek on like his slower start. I'm saying this dominant player just continuously yeah. like take 25, not slowing down at all. And right. just continually being like that dude over right, and over. Right, right, Dion, yeah. hey, Dion was a B Sue coming out of New England. Like yeah, he was. And, and he was, and the way that the offense, his feet were this big, but he was yeah, strapping, yeah, yeah. bro. And they were throwing the ball. And at times you felt like Derek was trying to do like, do I need to be more of a guy like that? Instead yeah. of being like, hey, this is yeah, who yeah. I'm going to be. Yeah. Right. Fucking, I'm going to run it. Yeah, and, and, I, and I asked that because yeah. I know like a lot of it was just opportunity. Right. He wasn't given the opportunity. So I'm not saying he wasn't good when he first, in the first years, but I'm just saying I wonder why they waited so long to give him the opportunity. It makes sense with the DeMarco Murray mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. But then go, when go he the leaves, like, thing. So he has his rookie year the way he has his rookie year with, with DeMarco. When you're in practice, like even when you're in practice, Derek's going to take some time to get going in practice a little bit. So if you're going through camp mm -hmm. and they're splitting reps, what are they getting? 10 reps each at practice? You're right. not going to be able to see, oh shit, we can give this guy the ball over and over and over again. Right, right, right. So now you're going through the season making these guys switch off a little bit. Derek's, he comes in, starts to warm up, gets back out. So then he has to go big in, re-warm up and stuff like that. And I don't know what your back situation was like. Obviously, I mean, you were there, but like when you got the ball and you hit that 69-yard run in a preseason game, people are probably saying, okay, we're cooking with something here. There was never that big flash of something with Derek right. in the beginning of those two years for the coaches to look and say, oh, we can give the guy this ball 25 times a game. I hear you know? Right, right, right. So maybe that plays a little more into it. And right. as a coach, you can't be like, damn, I can't believe you guys didn't see it. It's like, how, how are you going to see that? Like, right. you have no idea. You know, right, you're just right. kind of hoping. And when Derek first got to the league, like, they show clips of him at practice, like tripping over bags and shit. Like, this dude looks like a baby deer for a second. You know what I'm saying? Right. He was just like so big. I was like, dude, this okay. is a D-end. Yeah. Right, right, and, right. Like, he's like coming to his own. Like, it's crazy to say about a Heisman Trophy winner, but like, he comes in the first two years and it's like, good for him. 
that those right. first two years went like that. Right. Because then he still balls out those next two years, gets paid, and he's got more tread in the tires for the long run. Sure. And it's like, right, right. Derek's one of those dudes where he's like a, like, you know, Bax, you all know, like, the, there's only so many hits you guys got. Right. And with him, it's like, where's the slowdown? Like, where do you see him slowing down at all? Like, there's nothing, even with his foot yeah. stuff. Yeah. Will calls Will's like, is this, is this like the end of Derek? Like, is this, is, is this the last we're seeing of this man? And it's like, shows up and look at him again. He's doing it again. Right. You know? And the numbers aren't crazy right now. Yeah. But they never are in September that. and middle yeah, of October. Right. Never. Uh, you want to see them? Yeah. 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 They mean, ne they're never that way. way. He's sitting at what right now? Like 500? I don't I mean, even think hey, he's top five in rushing right now. What sucks is the fact that like, yeah, he's had, how many what thousand yard seasons? Three. But last Three. year, like last year didn't count because he got, he got stopped at nine. I know. And that's, that's a thousand like, yard season year, right there. He, he would have had a record rushing this, all, bro, yeah, all, all time. Bro, no all question. Hard. He was at 954 after seven games. Yeah, seven, and that's the crazy thing about it, man. We talk Damn. about this all the time, seven right? Games. He doesn't get hurt. I don't think we're, uh, this argument's not as big as what that's it is. True, that yeah. is true. He doesn't that's get, you point. know what I'm saying? But, but we, then you play ifs all the time, buddy. Yeah, but he would be at four years in a row of over a thousand yards. And not only that, but he did two years in a row. Two thousand, two K. Yeah, yeah, he the yeah, he's over, he, right? Yeah, he the number one in history. Yeah, he but we, I'm glad that you said Damn. that because we, we talk about that all the time. Like, once we go for two thousand yards, and you come back and go for if you don't go for two thousand yards again, and you like, go for thirteen hundred, they like, damn, he's he, he done oh, for, no, he fell off. Yeah, oh, I, ran, I ran for thirteen hundred yards. Yeah, is great. How did you find out? That's why. It's awesome. Yeah, it's Bro, awesome. Yeah. That's why when you talk yeah. about now, they like, oh, he has a slow start, this and that. But look at the, yeah, look at the, they're so the easy to forget in the league. They're so easy like, to forget what happened. They like, forget go back. that quick. Like go back to the 2000 yard season. Saying? The numbers were similar. Right. Exactly. Like, at this time, it yeah, was just like, ah, yeah. Four years in a row with double digit touchdowns too. Right. They make it seem like he, he does, got he carries that motherfucker. Two hundred rushing yards right now. Like rolling right now too. Yeah. Violent, bro. Right. I like, and Derek's not like as big as he is. He's not a, like a bulldoze you over type of right, dude. Exactly. He does a great job of just having arm tackles left and right, right. like moving them hips just a little right. bit. Right. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Yeah. Not a big jump cut guy, but he yeah. can get down. Right. He's been running a little more mean. Got the new hairstyle. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Bro, I never seen emotion like that from Derek. Yeah, that. yeah never yeah, seen emotion like that. Right. And yeah, he's just. He's just about his business. About his business. He really is. Yeah. But I think business. he doesn't get hurt next year. Like, we're not having this conversation. One thing, you had Eddie at two, right? Nah, I was here when Chris Brown and No, 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 I'm saying like, when you ranked him. When you ranked him. Yeah. You had Eddie at two, and you yeah, had Eddie at two. Eddie too. Yeah, for me, it's, but all, you about, and I, it's all about uh, longevity, like, continuing to stack yeah. years. Like, again, you have one year with one of those guys. Yeah. I'm choosing Derek. No, I think I think part of the, the Eddie George being three to you and me, I don't know if this is for you, but maybe it's like, so much time has gone by, you don't appreciate it as much. Right, you know right. What I'm that could be it. That could but be it a little bit. Because like, Eddie was but, a stud, bro. No, he was, but he was how can stud. I? I, I, on how can I put, boys. Only my thing is I can't put Eddie yeah, over somebody that went for two thousand yards. Yeah. As a running back, I'm with him. If you, you know go two K, you he, automatically get the edge. You so only you can't go Eddie at three, three then. I probably yeah. No, I think he. I did. You had Eddie at two at first, right? I might but have you to can't, come at three thinking about how can you do that? That's different. We all, as a running back, you grow up your whole life. Like I'm going, to, I'm going to do two thousand yards. That's what I'm yeah. doing. Like so, when you do two K, and you call even, but I mean, this dude's been running for four thousand yards his whole life. So Derrick Henry been, he's been doing his thing. Bro, he went two K in high school, two K yeah, in college, two yeah, yeah. K in NFL. Right. Only player, only person in the world to ever do that. Yeah, I and went three K. I went three K in college. Okay. <laughs> and twenty five hundred. Yeah, yeah, but you know, ECU. the two K argument. The two K argument's valid. Yeah, that's valid. As a matter of fact, I might have to switch mine. I might have to go eighty three, not Derek too. Yeah, that's but Eddie never had a two thousand. Yeah. But to give Eddie his flowers, a dude was fucking dominant for so well, long. He was lovely. Like, Eddie was lovely, man. He had to, he had to oh, make a transition. Like, think how hard it would be to be playing somewhere and having to move. But not only having to move, like the Rams went from uh, uh, St. Louis to L.A. Yeah. Right. You got to move and then go play in Memphis right. and drive right. two hours, go to Memphis, come yeah, back, back to practice yeah. at Vanderbilt. You're doing meetings in a room like this. Right, like, that's he worked through that adversity and still was so dominant. Man, Eddie so was dominant. great, man. Eddie was great, and he yeah. ran so hard, like, and it was. Man, Madden I still cover. remember he's on the Madden, um, cover. He's on the Madden, he's on Madden cover. Dreamcast. Madden cover. Did y'all have a Dreamcast? No, I had a Dreamcast for a minute, but I'm not. Dreamcast I was never on it like that. No, but no, but Dreamcast. Nintendo that year when Eddie, 
Miami. No, but I'm saying. Come on, man, I know the Dream Cash. Man, you know, that ain't the You're right. Independence 64. I was all about 64. That year when Dream, like, it went around long, but Eddie was the best running back on the game that year. Nah, yeah, Eddie was that. When Dream Cash, yeah, it was Eddie and Marshall Falk. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall was Marshall. a monster. Monster. Marshall. That was my right. favorite. Can't go off back. one game, one Dreamcast game. When I played NCAA back in the day, I was the best yeah. running back in the league. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't <laughs> touch me. You couldn't Yo, touch Eddie me. Eddie was great, then. though, man. That's my boy. But yeah, I that's why I gotta go with Derek too, because he had the two thousand yards. So I respect that. So he goes, so if Derek goes a couple more years over a thousand, would you t- would you tip the cap to him? Would you bend the knee? But as Derek, far as what? Him one. one. I can't do that. If he if he break my record, yeah. Oh, you say if he breaks your record? Yeah. You're lucky he got hurt then last year. What do you mean record? 2,500? Oh, 2,500. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if he would have got 2,500. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, the man, the man, the man yeah, yeah. doesn't really catch like that. rushing yards. No, no, no. He, that, no that's, it, that's all purpose. All purpose. Okay, so all purpose. he beeps you on the rushing yards, though. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. Yeah, like 20 more yards. Yeah, see. See what I'm saying? Yo, man. Okay, man. Yeah, you see nah, that? Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Say that. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother hundred yards. Hey, and guess what? And guess what? Guess what? Guess what? In the last game, I had a 70 yard touchdown call back. back. So you'd have broke talk. And it wasn't broke, even holding. Bro, how, how how I was hot, bro. I was going. I feel like every player got there if, you know, he didn't play in the second half. No, but, bro, it wasn't a holding call. What was it? I would be Aaron Dickerson record. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. What happened? What was the call? It was oh, so on our fullback. So we was so we we was running the inside zone. Mm-hmm. So we threw the um. So in this game, we threw it in where we do the toss. We toss yeah. it. And a mile hole come up. Him and the linebacker meet head up. Bum. He block him, and they call holding on him. Probably just fell. Can we pull that film up? They Is there call, a way to pull that up right now? They call holding on him. But this screen hasn't been on the whole time, by the, the way. This is the crazy thing about it. Guess what? The next year, you know how they come and talk to us. The goddamn ref come to us at the at the thing. The, the next year, yes. Bro, how hot? How I mad was, were you, bro? I was so mad because, listen, going into that game, everybody knew I wanted to get 2,000 yards. But How far away were you going into the game? Huh? How far away? I needed 130 yards. But we all we all said, man, forget that we going for the overall record. Yeah. yeah. We going for the overall record. Yeah. So in the second quarter, I broke for 70. Called it back. This was your 2K year? Yeah. yeah. That would have gave, gave him the, gave him the rush. He had the last game. He would have broke Eric Dickerson. Derek got uh two K. He got the Bro, he got his 2K. He, he did like 230. He got it the last 230. He needed 230. I watched that game. Yeah, he needed yeah, 230. Yeah. Houston, bro. Yeah, I needed. Yeah, I needed one. And the crazy thing about it, I didn't even know that I broke that. I um the 2500. I didn't even know that I had broke Marshall Fall record till the next day. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I only care about the 2,000 yards. Yeah. Yeah. Then the next day, I'm getting an interview. Purpose? Yeah, they interviewing me and they asked me about. I'm like, what? What my yeah. total? I didn't even know what my total yards was. That's crazy. They're like, yeah, you brought it. I think um, Marshall had like 24, 23. And I finished so with 25 on You didn't even cemented yourself as number one until you learned that stat about yourself. No, I still would have. You say you didn't even know. No, but I still would have just off of my 2,000 yard year. I think like, that- I'm the only guy, hey, listen, I'm the only guy in history with like eight 80 yard runs. True story. I think like Derek gets, gets another double digit touchdown Derek's, year. Derek's one of like five people to have a 99 yard run. Right, right. And dudes had he like had a ninety-eight and a ninety, right? Yeah, I, was gonna say. Ass, yeah. Yeah. I think goal, Derek's like, like if he gets double digits this year, which he will, he gets like if you get at least fifteen hundred, which I think he will. I think there's a strong argument. He goes down. He now becomes because again he's stacking. Yeah, that's, he's, a fi- that's five yeah, years in a row. Together. Say last year, last year was nine fifty, but. We, everyone, everyone knows if he doesn't get hurt, he's he's. But that's the if, like you say, if I, I, I know, they when they call my. But that would, listen, mean, that would mean five years hey, in a row. Hey, you but listen, over hey, but check this out. If you don't call my touchdown back, I probably have twenty six hundred. Yeah, and if he don't get hurt in, in Arizona, ain't no telling how many overall yards you have for your career, and that would be another thousand yard season. Would you have overall your career eleven like thousand? No, nah, I had like ninety seven. 9,700 rushing, and then I got like 12,000 all purpose. 
Yeah, what is your what is your total? Yeah, you yeah, were kind of getting hot right there. there. I remember practicing at Nebraska, and we'd always talk about like dances and celebrations, mm. and everyone's doing your fucking. What? God, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, that was a good one too, man. Yeah. What? Yeah. Massive, yeah. massive Titans fan. Me massive. and uh, right. me and uh, Pac Man used to do that dance. Man. Clap. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's the car we're talking about in the back of the backfield. Listen, yeah. that's ain't that preseason right there? Or nah, that's the first nah, game? nah, that's the first game. Bro, it was my, my rookie year. Washington came to Tennessee for first game of the preseason. <laughs> you ended like basically, and he hit you too, though, but you fucking hurt his ass. Uh, Philip Thomas, he was a rookie of safety from Washington. You guys met in the hole and fucking he tore his shoulder. Yeah, you hear that, my man? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pressure. I got can't wait to go tell this man because his kids, be, they be. Sometimes they yeah. don't want to drop that shoulder, but I be telling them, you can hurt somebody doing yeah. it, man. Mm -hmm. you, it'll hurt them way more than it hurts you when you're running that kind of, that full speed. That boy How high? Right, That's man. high. How do you, okay, look, watching this video, watching the old uniforms, how do you feel about the new un, new tight uniforms? Man, they lovely, man. The old one. They Why lovely. I you, like them. You like the new ones? Yeah, I like the new ones. And the good thing about it, see, back then... Like they they let them you could wear whatever type of shoes you want and all. Like yeah. we was always trying to wear the red. We was yeah, trying to get yeah. the red in there, but they wouldn't let us back then. So that's why I had it on the bottom of my shoe or whatever. But yeah, man, I love the new uniforms. Yeah, they, they are nice. They got the socks. You only had total on. total uh I think you already said it. You already said your all purpose yards, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, seven ninety seven hundred. Ninety seven hundred, how many uh receiving? No, those yeah, are all purpose total. as well. All no. purpose twelve thousand. I think I had twelve thousand. All purpose twelve thousand. Yeah, because yeah. he had Russian was ninety seven. Ninety seven. I think yeah. it's actually eleven thousand three hundred ninety six. Derek, okay, I looked like it up earlier. Seven thousand right now. Derek, Derek's on his way. What Derek got? Human calculator. Derek's at like seven thousand. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. yeah. A little over seven thousand right now. Oh. Eddie's at ten. You're at nine rushing. But yeah, all purpose twelve twelve thousand. Right. So I mean, yeah. So yeah, man. For me to do that, he got to break my record. Which record? The 2,500? Yes. You think he's got to break that record? How he got 17 yeah. games? I right. did it 16. Ooh. Hang on, hang on. He, but what, 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 what I'm that, saying man. is I don't we'll think do he's going to touch 2,500. You, you, you rushed for 3,000 in college? You had all-purpose? All-purpose 3,000. It says here it was 2,960. Yeah, basically, Ooh. yeah. yeah. 40 yards <laughs> off. Oh, 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 oh. I'm 40 I yards off. Yeah, but you see that, though. Yeah, no, it's solid. I don't see that. At first, numbers, too. Hey, first pick, all, first all I'm saying is pick? like he might not touch the 2,500. No, why not? But if he, he got 17 games. Yeah, yeah but man doesn't catch like that though. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he, you know, he doesn't catch yeah. like that, huh? If I'm you, that's the exact okay. So, I'm but what I'm just saying, if we're talking about y'all, keep saying y'all keep saying okay, we're gonna take out the 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 um catching aspect. We're talking, okay, so You're tell right. me, hold on, wait, no, tell me I don't this. I disagree with you. And I don't, like, I know he watched this show, and that's my boy. But what I'm saying is, right here, look, go back. Yeah, yeah. I got you. That's the, that was the fourth quarter? Right here, they call right. holding. Right there. That's not a holding. My point. At all. That would have been the record record. Yeah. Hey, it's crazy. But but listen, he was, the, the, around and he was coming out the sideline. He was so tired. I hadn't played for weeks at this point. He talking yeah, about. I'm like, you better get your ass. Bad call. Not, ooh, uh, no, no, that's dog shit. Right. 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 Go back. Go right. back. Yeah. Let's if see if we can find if anything if petty. If I want to find something petty. I'm a backer. I'm like, just to be. I just want to. I like I like Lou, man. This guy's crazy. Go to the other angle. Hey, come on. You saw it. I want to see. I want to see it from the back. You want to see the way? I see. See the end zone view. Yeah, I gotta see his right hand. He was already buying, bro. I'm gone, though. I ain't, hey, I'm just being honest. Watch Sorry. his right arm. Look at that. Oh! That's it. But they call that on you? No, that's, I think it's bullshit. <laughs> I think it's bullshit and petty. But I guess that's what they had to call. That's why he apologized. Look at that, that mustache on Fish, dude. Fish was notorious. I think that's the right crazy. call. Who's that? Who's that guy? Dinger. I don't know. You allowed him. Yeah. I'm redeeming as one of those guys. This is your boy right there. Big Mikey. We yeah, and that's big what country. I'm saying. Y'all keep saying that y'all want to pull out the catching aspect, but a lot of times when I look at the game on third down, we got to bring Derek out of the game. So he ain't even playing all the downs. But he getting, he all But that's downs. what I'm no, but that's what I'm telling you. If we're gonna talk about if we're gonna talk about the top backs, you if you if, yeah. if you starting your organization, right? 
and you want to build your offense around the back. Yeah. You're going to want to build your offense around the back that you can have on the on field three downs. Yeah, you don't want to have to put them off every third down. But as history has showed, oh. they, they were – they were a game away from the Super Bowl. Did you? No, but I'm just saying. 2008. No. In 2008, they went 13 and three. Yeah. yeah. And they were the number. They had, what you guys had a number first round bye. Yeah. Right. First round bye. Yeah. He tore his. I mean, he's he sprained his ankle. Yeah. Okay, but what I'm saying. Know, but but, you, but can you answer that question though? Yeah. Where, do you want to build your offense around a guy that you can play three downs or two downs? Well, the, the obvious answer to that is two downs, but you got to look at uh, how the body of the the body of work that Derek's oh, so, putting out. No, right but I'm saying I mean, so. You will you be the obvious so, answer is you have, you want a no, guy on so, for three downs and so, two yeah, downs. Yeah. So you saying two downs? Okay, so yeah. you, oh my bad, I meant three. Yeah, I meant three, three downs, yeah. right? Oh, three downs. I was like, why are they laughing? What's your answer? All right, well, I got a question. I mean, yeah, you want to you want an every down back. Period. Mm. I mean, period. That's yeah, so uh, so that's, that's what, what I'm saying. Hey, I think what's fucking crazy. I'm gonna need that space. Well, sorry, my knee hurts. Damn, look at me, <laughs> bro. You ain't got ACL. So yeah, so three downs, right? So, uh, I mean, that's a good argument, but like, like what, bro? Yeah. Five years in a row of of what? Over a thousand and double digit touchdowns. Double six. digits. Yeah, I did six. I'm saying. I don't think you had double digits. But you didn't though. have double digit touchdowns. Nah, I didn't because they took me out when we got round by the goal line sometimes. You put in Lindell. Exactly, but that's just how we rocking. That's the. Yeah, you got put in that smash. I was, yeah, I was yeah. benefiting. I ain't mad. And I, 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 want, I want to preface this with bunch. listen, we're all going to be friends at the end of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just make sure it's all good. But you had. Thanks, we're not going to be friends anymore. You only had two, two of those seasons, only two of them you had double digit touchdowns. Yeah, but you got to think. I'm the type of. I'm 195. Whoa, 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 whoa. It hurts Derek on yeah. third down. It hurts you no, on the goal line. No, 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 not really. Hey, not really because you I can do it. But you know, when you get with the coaches, they want to put a bigger guy in the in the game. You know that. Do you fault them yeah. for that? That's what you kind of. No, because I can do it. Yeah. Short yardage. I can do it. Short yardage. Were you in third and third and one? When it depends. Yeah, Sometimes like Heimer Dinger, yes. Yes, well Heimer Dinger. But then Dinger you gotta think after Dinger ball. left, yeah. I had a different offensive coordinator every year, a different quarterback every year. Mm. Right. We didn't have a Derry had AJ. Hmm? Derry had AJ Brown. For two like three years. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, he's a stud. I can't even. See what I'm saying? He's so you're crushing it for my fantasy right team. Now, no, I'm just saying. I'm be boys. No, I'm just saying. All right, all right. Hey, all right, here's a question. <laughs> you're saying because you rushed for two thousand yards. To the sole fact that you rushed for 2,000 yards, you got to get put over Eddie George, right? Well, yeah, they're saying the criteria is if you're yes, 2,000, yeah. you automatically okay. Yeah, yeah, All right, so you rushed for 2,000 yards your second year in the league. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Let's say the next year you get hurt, you never play football again. You play two years in the league. Are you still over Eddie George? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I can't say that. That's two <laughs> years. Like, no, I can't say 2000. that, though. <laughs> yeah. If the only no, criteria is 2,000. Yeah, but I can't say that because I only played two years. Hey, but here's I the, wouldn't be able to here's, say I'm better than saying, Eddie George. Here's I'm playing what we're saying right now. Yeah. Or here's what I'm saying anyway. You're one and Derek's two, but Derek's on his way to become a number one. But you're just saying unless he's he gets saying no, he's saying no unless he beats 2,500. Yeah, yeah, he got to be 2,500. The thing I think we and then, on. then on top of that, where was it? Derek's first thousand yard season was year three, three or four. Three, three. Year three. That, but that, again, that's when I, when we were talking about. That's why he was affected in my race. That's what I'm he's saying. Seven. If he he's goes three year more seven. years over a thousand, then he's got seven we over a thousand. Still talking ifs. We still talking. Yeah, we still talking ifs. You're I, right. Here's what I wanted to say. Earlier. How many he got? He got well, two. We did do a little if for you too with the seventy yard touch. Who's that, Derek? That's not what I'm saying. You see a big you, that 937 that's, sucks that's, because he's, look, a, look, he's about look. to have two two thousand yard seasons in a row. Be. But that's an if. That's an if. That's an if. You talking right here, right? Yeah. Two thousand fifteen yards. Yeah, thousand fifty. 497 out of the five right now. Yes, but the 937, so that's, that's an eight-game play. Eight-game play. And yeah, but, that okay. Eight, on a broken foot. And 10 touchdowns. He had 64 yards. He had a broken foot. He still ran the whole game. I'm no, saying, we're just talking stats here, though. We can't, yeah, but he, it's not a 1,000 yeah, yards. Yeah, we did it for you with the 70-yard so, run. No, we, we didn't. Did no, we, no. We pulled up the video, and we were like, no, yeah, you're I right. I didn't break the record, though. Right. Give the, give the, cause that, I didn't break the record. That goes into it because it's unfortunate he got hurt. I didn't get it, though. But my first six years, I went for 1,000. Not not thousands, like it was you know twelve, thirteen. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's all. I, I, you know what? I love the fact that you're here to back him up because I feel like if he, if he was by himself right now, it'd be a I tough be, battle. Yeah, and I saw so I'm, I'm stuck. 
first out the game. That is incredible. Twelve hundred. That you did that in your two thousand thirteen. I think I just twelve hey, thousand. Hey, and you want to talk oh, about? My phone, my phone. Hey, then you you want to talk about, bro? Eight hundred right? eleven. Hey, look. Eight hundred eleven. That last games. year. That last year. I played on the torn meniscus since week two. Oh yeah, the thousand. With the last year with a uh, with one seventy seven. I I w yeah. Torn meniscus that whole year. That three year stand is nuts coming out of your first year. Filthy, bro. You probably couldn't even walk around Nashville. No. Yes. Yeah, Crazy dash, man. Dash. <laughs> <laughs> but then what I give you? I gave you nine, fourteen, eleven, four. I got receiving touchdowns too, though. So you say I ain't double digit, but I got receiving touchdowns in there too. Hey, that's it's, it's a fair because he <laughs> yeah. had a, he's on the wheel. He had double digit. I'm trying to be as unbiased as or I'm not. Yeah, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible. Yeah, I, hey, I look, really look. Am. Look over here on this 15, 25, 16, 14, 14, 14. Those are yeah, the total yards. That's 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 uh, yeah. Four yeah. thousand. You was that right? Damn yeah, and you basically right. had double digit your first year because you had a t uh, receiving touchdown. Right. 10, 16, 12, 4. Yeah, that one that's tough. Was that and then he had another another double digit in thirteen. Yeah. On the torn meniscus. Chris, I said my rankings. You're number one. Big dog. Um, yeah, but no, no, no. But Paul Eddie George. George. But, the, Eddie George. but with, well, let's no. give Eddie some flowers real quick. Yeah, I know yeah. we did kind of throw Eddie at three there. We did. Yeah, we, he's kind of just been. He's been Eddie going, he started going to be at crazy. Two. Eddie got some crazy shit it's too. But hey, y'all keep y'all forgetting the Earl, man. Yeah, we yeah, I did I did specifically keep it at Titans. We can we can throw him <laughs> yeah. in. Yeah. 13, 13, 12, 13, 15, 9, That's 11, nuts. 11. That's nuts. See, now, oh, now yeah. I don't know what to do. We gotta get good. It's about West at 225. Only one double digit though. Earl, oh, two. Yes, one time? That one at 225. Y'all got to leave, right? huh? Yeah. yeah this Eddie. Did you get the, Did you 13, drive here or did you get an Uber? 13, you probably got to get Uber. 12, 13, 15. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that. 11. Yeah. I think you're straight, though. Okay. I mean, you're still an hour 20 out. Yeah, you're good. I would actually leave. How far is the airport? Huh? Oh, yeah, that's you. He went crazy, too. He did go crazy. But look at the touchdowns. 8, 6, 5, 9, 14. 512, 54. Yeah, y'all talking about me. Y'all saying. He, Eddie's our three. No, nah, but he was saying something about the touchdown. Eddie is a big guy, and he only got two doubles. Right. That's crazy. He, he, he fell. Chris, he fell the number three on no, my I'm list. Just saying. He fell the number three. I had double but digits as a backup. But, but a lot of times. You're double, still number one. You're number just, one. Yes, but a lot I of had times double digits as a backup. Yeah, yeah. Lindell White is into the conversation. Yeah, I did have double digits as a backup. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what I, I wanted, wanted to say the whole matter time. Matter of fact, right. I, I broke, matter of fact, I broke Eddie's touchdown record for the year. One of them years. I have more touchdowns than it. I'm for the What is Chris, are you four? Elevated. I'm just being real. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're like, we got fucking problems now. You know what I'm saying? Eddie is at. Can't be out of 15. Oh. Eddie's at three six with limited. But yards. his double digit. If we're talking about receiving too, he had a, he had a double digit well, with the uh, receiving. I want to see where Derek is. It's interesting to see where Derek. We got. Hey, let me Look see. up there. I want to see that right here. Right here. Oh, that's a, see. He's at four eight. That's a. That's, that's a, a great, great average. average. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. At four eight. I mean, at what five was, yards. What was Eddie's carry. and what was yours? Eddie's was three six. Five yards of carry. Yeah, he's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, but Eddie's last year kind of kills him a little bit. But like, I truly want to, I got to get this off my chest. Like I've been wanting to say that's crazy work. Podcast. What's that? It is nuts. We started a podcast, and one day we would be have Lindell White and Chris Johnson on, and we're arguing about them, Eddie George, <laughs> Derrick Henry, like who's the best. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's what I'm saying. Like, this is nuts, bro. This is hard. Wild. Wild. Them some stats, boy. What about playoffs? That's running back? Hey, hey, ass white. Whoa! 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 Dude, dude. Man, I want my own ass. I like this dude. Hey, this man, hey, we would have got along so good. Yeah, we would have. We would have. He said, what about playoffs? <laughs> <laughs> right. you see, yeah, I'm you telling you. Pull the playoffs who's, who's, uh, this right here, Chris? I mean, That's look bad, at career we playoffs, sacked. six and a half. We, we, we can't even get you a picture. What's that about? Oh no, they ain't. They they and got me at three probably. Man. Carrying the playoffs. Yeah. One yeah. game played though. One playoff game. I mean, how did a playoff game? Uh, Arizona. Carrie Collins. 
All right, last question coming to you from Roback. The Roback question. Use code BOYS on Roback.com for 20% off your first purchase. That's R H O B A C K.com, code BOYS. They work with the best college athletes from Will Anderson to the boy Michael Mayer to B. John Robinson. They also just dropped new performance joggers. And trust us, you are going to want to get these in your house. Use code BOYS, 20% off. Who's Who's faster man? out of you and Tyreek Hill? That's or in your guys' prime? Me. I can't believe y'all asked. Like he's the fa- he had the fastest time and like y'all gotta say like maybe Rocket Ross John Ross because he broke his forty times. Yeah, so John like, Ross. If John Ross yeah. looked at something the wrong way, he get injured. Right. I've, yeah. Me, of course. That's tough. Who's faster than you? Who's faster? We're talking about you and your prime. On Nobody the fo- on the football field. Nobody. Nobody. Hmm. You saying cheetahs as fast as you? Nobody. Not when my prime. No. It kind of pisses me off that you're not in your prime anymore because I'm trying to run it. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to see that, right? I'm at least just... want to see it going by me. Like, no question. How long am I keeping up? Mouth yeah. wide open. Yeah, yeah in right. prime, yeah, nobody in my prime. What do you think you can run right now? Right now, I probably can run a 4-3. You think you can run a 4-3 right now? Come on, Chris, yeah. don't do that. What did you run at the comment? 4-2-8? 4-2-4. See what I'm saying? Bro, you always trying to take no, some no, 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 don't, don't do that. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. why I like him. First away, do that. Here, man. Yeah. You think he's running a 4-3 right now? DJ could probably run a 4-3. How many promos you make? Lindell, come he on. Three. Like that he knows how to get down and like do right that. now still? I'm saying like, like training, three. workout? Three. I'm saying if yeah. he was training and do, like, if that's what he needed to do, I'm sure he yeah. could probably he said not. right now. I don't know. Right now? 4-4 four, four is still fast. Like we had 40 yards out there. We're like We went out right now. You did a little dynamic warm-up. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to run a 4-3. It's only 40 yards. Buddy, I literally, I've, I feel like I've already dug a little hole for myself. Are you saying he's a whole second <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a 4 3. I, I would say he could probably run a uh, mid 4 he could 5. He'd be a 4 3 9, but he's still 4 3. I'm saying me and him might be close right now. Right now. Listen, okay. Hey, right, Will, relax. Hey. Will. Out of the Bro, three. Buddy, the three, I'm, I'm, hey. I'm literally three weeks out of surgery and we're close right now. No, <laughs> relax. Hey, I guarantee relax, you. Ma. Did you, have you not checked right. the tape on the kid? What'd you run? Uh, a four five at a pro day, bro. That's that's yeah, four or five in your What'd prime. You, know, bro, you probably didn't run it. I didn't you run it. Your boy ran a four prime. eight at three hundred ten pounds. I, yeah, hey, I listen. Never, I out of the okay, out of the out of the, the three backs, the rankings. I, I, I guarantee I run the fastest forty out of the three backs right now. You think you're beating Derek? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't mean, know. He takes a second. For sure. I still stand. Derek, runs what a, I just Derek was a four five guy, and he's gotten faster, bro. Still think. So well, you think Derek can beat me right now? It's a lot different. Just as you think Derek can beat me right now? Jack thinks he's probably beating C- CJ right now. Yeah, yeah, and here's why. I, and listen, I swear to God, I'm not trying to be simple. <laughs> Derek is in. He's in football shape. He's been running. He's been training. Hey, what he's Derek like, run at the he's combine? 27 or 28. What like, Derek run at the combine? Derek 28. I think so. 27, 28. How? Yeah, 28. Damn. Yeah. yeah 28. Silly ass class. Yeah, but that's a hey, but that's another thing which y'all saying. Y'all keep saying the next couple of years. You know when you get twenty eight at running back. They say it's like this way. We all know that. You know when you get twenty eight at yeah, running they, back. But they said you can't play into your forties, Tom Brady. No, but we're talking about running backs here. I so know. Do y'all think Derek got four or five more years? I don't know. I think. I, don't know. I, I think, think with Derek, with you getting the ball thirty times a game. I don't know. You would think because so. we got to think. Hey, physically and everything. Yes. No, there's no chance. But you like he hasn't slowed down at no, all. No, no, no. He hasn't. I'm riding with listen. my boy until he. I'm no, I'm riding with Derek too. But what I'm saying is, been rocking Derek's skin fluid all all episode. There's no question. All episode. <laughs> I'm fucking. Hey, <laughs> hey. So, but my thing is okay. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's kind of going to go back to how it started with Derek at the beginning. That you saying that's going to hurt him a little bit towards the end. Like, towards the end, like, we know for Derek to be Derek, he got to get 25, 30 carries. Yeah, he's got to get at least 20. And back in. Can, can he, can well, he... He's say, averaging 4.8 right now. But what I'm saying is, can he sustain that the next two, three, four years? I think for being sure Derek, Being years. Derek, My man know. takes care of his body like crazy, bro. Here's what Derek... No, man. everybody take care of their body, but I'm just they'll, saying, they'll bro. They'll have to kind of keep an identity kind of like that with Tennessee, and they'll have to obviously extend right, it. That's so what it right, because he listen, a lot of... But no, but no, but, but the yeah. thing about it is, it's about winning. Yeah, if they win. So if we're not winning like that, is how long is we just going to keep giving Derek the ball like that if we're not winning like that? If one four right. in a row. No. Yeah, yeah. They haven't but I'm slowed down on that. Saying if it slows down, y'all no, but we're talking about when we're not talking about, we're talking about winning Super Bowls. Yeah. If that formula is not working, 
I'm not saying that Derek can't do it, but I'm saying if that formula is not working, then at some point it's going to be like switch it up. Yes. What do you think? If it's not, if it's what, not what working, I know do? we've been doing it. What are they going to do? No, but I'm just no, saying at some right. point. Yeah. No, so what do you think? What is you, know, you know what they told me when I got cut? What is that? They said. That's a good point. They said, "Yeah, we know. Know what I'm saying? We're not saying that you're not a good back or you're not the best back, but we're not winning." We're not winning. But that doesn't lo but logically I'm, make a whole lot of sense. No. Is it, what I, well, I've missed. How much are you getting paid the last year? My last year, eight. He held out. Eight million. I was kind of wanting to ask about that. He held out one year, and then the next year, that's when they ended up releasing you, right? No, 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 no. Nah, he, he was the holdout release? Nah, I held out after. Oh, you held out back to back years. No, I ain't not bad to bad years. He lying. I held out he after. I mean, he didn't, he didn't show up to OTAs and stuff until yeah. he made sure that the different money was made. So whatever. So after my that. second year, so after I went, <laughs> I don't so know after I went for two thousand yards, I was supposed to make, I think it was like seven hundred, eight hundred, or whatever. You on your rookie deal. Rookie deal. So they end up moving the money that I was supposed to make in my last year of that contract. They gave it to me, so they gave me five million. That's and then, insane that you got that in your rookie yeah, that's that's why. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. Right, right. So second year, and then my third year, that's when they paid me. After and then my you third. held out in what year? The third year. Third year. Yeah. Before the third year, I held you out. That's when out. they paid me. No, after the third year, that's when they paid me. I held out or whatever. But what, that's what I'm saying. So, like, he said, it absolutely don't make no sense at all. But they say we weren't winning. So, so even though I'm a, I'm a great back, they saying we're not winning. So... That's so what are the Titans need to do? What are the Titans need to do right now to to be Super Bowl? We need, a we need a receiver. We need receiver. Do you think they should have traded AJ? Hell no. Well, that was by, I mean, that was. We need a receiver I, and we I, need I, I, a athletic tight end. We're not, you know, he, he can become. He probably he be can a become him player soon. Yeah. But right now we know. No, AJ we already know what AJ can do. Why AJ, we? AJ, we yeah. He's a Pro Bowl. He's, right, but that that was yeah, there together. No, you needed, you needed the two sides to come to an agreement. Like I think. Why not AJ though? Little, I think AJ, AJ made it difficult. Why we? Why well, why couldn't we give him that? Why we? Why we? Why we? You're paying we, a quarterback twenty five. I mean, you're paying a lot of dudes. In this one, I don't understand. You got Jeff no, up. no, you got a lot of moves being made. No, you know? we have well, AJ. We restru That's who do you take, Jeff Simmons or AJ? If you if you need it, I don't know. I mean, well, we bro, how do we? But oh, how do we? Hey, we yeah. worry about that when we get. How do we? Yeah, but from my understanding, yeah, we're paying you. And then when he comes yeah, but, up, we'll worry about that. How do you yeah. AJ? From my understanding, yeah. it was like it was like thirty a year, twenty nine, thirty. No, twenty five. He getting twenty five in the year. He got twenty five a year, but he wanted. Oh, he won. Allegedly, it. from oh, so what I've heard. Took, he's getting 25 from the Eagles now. Yeah, but, but what that, he, what I he heard he him tweet. Uh, no. From what I've heard, he was asking yeah, for like but no, I heard, but I heard, but he tweeted and said that that's what he was asking for 25. Yeah, but, yeah. but he probably wasn't. But how do you give a Tannehill 100 before you pay Derek? Mm. I think they're different parts. I think Derek, Tannehill was on the last year of his deal. I think Derek got two more years. Yeah. I'm not sure. I would have to, I would yeah. have to, I would have to war room this thing. Yeah. You're saying why would they pay Tannehill 100 million before? Uh, Derek? Yeah. I mean, was not give when, AJ what he wasn't, 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 wasn't so Derek, Derek wasn't up for yeah. his new deal, was he? No, nah, but he had that rest of 2,000 yards. He didn't get but paid You know the man. business. Like, they're going to keep you as long as they can on that rookie deal. Yeah, they got that's from a team standpoint. You got to do that. And they needed a quarterback. They needed to bring a quarterback in. And then that's when that's when the Mariota that's thing so, happened. Okay. So why are you not trade? And that year when they replaced yeah, Mariota with Tannehill, they went to the AFC Championship. They did with Traylon. Tannehill. No. So you exactly. give him a hundred with a pick. Where, where's Odell? So. Or like, yes, yeah, yeah. like, we know he's hurt, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. bring, okay, bring Jarvis Landry in. Bring somebody that we know is a proven number but one. I Robert, say Robert Woods say before, because man, listen, well, they disrespect the position, man. Chosen, that's my guy. When he starts feeling what? better, I think when he's, I don't know, I know them knees are tricky. So like, mm. I think when Bobby started feeling better, he'll be. But I mean, before he got hurt, he rushed. He had not rushed. He received. A thousand yards, four years in a row. Yeah, he's hard. I think he was on his way to five, or either was on his way to four. Imagine, so you have Bobby Trees with AJ. But bro, eight, last year you had Derrick Henry, AJ Brown, and Julio Jones. That's, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Not everybody was really on the field at the same time. Yeah, never. No, it wasn't. But no, that's why I Julio said they do the same stuff yeah. right now. Yeah. 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 Is he doing it now? Yeah. This is fucking awesome, boys. Yeah. 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 Fuck it's yeah, it's got to end right now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll have to do it again. We'll have to. We'll have to collab again. We'll be back soon for sure. Yeah. Appreciate you. We need to get an update.